friends, and welcome to Express Lane, the show that brings you speed runs in 60 minutes or less. I'm your host, Oscar424, with occasional guest appearances from my co- Corgi co-host, Galahad and Freya. But before we get into our runs, I have one tiny little, little announcement, because I always do, you know me. That is... A little thing called Awesome Games Done Quick 2025 will be live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania from January 5th to January 12th. So head over to gamesdonequick.com and check the AGDQ 2025 Important Dates section to learn everything you want to know about the upcoming event. It's going to be awesome. But right now, we are looking at a set of awesome, awesome runs and that, like, you know, some runs, people take months or years to perfect the runs but looking at these four they're all really new games and these runners have had zero time to become masters and they already are i'm like super jealous of all of them but looking at what we have coming up today we have yars rising we have a nice little fun race of that we got some ufo 50 we have the rocky horror show video game and to start things off, we have a wonderful 80% restricted run of The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom by Joish. So take it away. All righty. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so let us get Hello. started here. All righty. So I am Joash, and I will be speedrunning for us Echoes of Wisdom 80% restricted. And with me today, we also have my two co-commentators, uh, Glovers and Lunatic J. Y'all can introduce yourselves. Hi, hello. I'm Lunatic J. I'm mostly a speedrun YouTubing channel, but I have been dabbling in Echoes of Wisdom any percent unrestricted, but I'm looking to get into restricted. I'm here to help commentate this run today. And I'm Glovers, and if you watched the last time we were on this show, I beat Joash in a race in this category. Hello. Wow. Uh, well, That's how well, we're starting, huh? Well, now I'm regretting my co-commentators. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, all righty. First you sudden but inevitable betrayal. <laughs> yeah, what have I done? No. Uh, all right, so countdown. Um, guess we'll uh, get the run started in three, two, one, go. Oh. All right, so as I said before, we're doing any percent restricted. Now, you might have noticed uh, before I said any percent restricted. I had the uh, additional restricted title uh, alongside any percent. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, what is what is restricted about any percent? And how is this game, how does this game already have an any percent restricted with it being uh, almost three months old, I think it is? Well, so I'll give a I'll give a brief overview. We'll be able to explain it a little bit better as we get later in the run. Uh, but basically, um, any percent restricted is what I would consider a more consistent run and a more accessible run. So basically, current any percent uh, does a uh, does a trick that it takes a long time to set up and also has RNG at the very end and is also just an overall difficult run. But it also only really works on version 1.0.1, which is not the latest version, so it's not a very easy version to get a hold of if you don't already have, if you're not already on that version. Um, Any percent restricted bans uh, doing the, uh, the the RNG trick I mentioned earlier. So basically, uh, the the main the main glitch of this game is wrong warping, and the, the RNG part is actually a random wrong warp, where it, it sends you to an, or it either sends you to a, like a, a random place, or it crashes the game. And it's like, it, it, you have to spend like a minute to set up that particular trick, and it's, uh, it, 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 can, it can be pretty difficult because of those factors. So basically what 80% Restricted uh, attempts to accomplish is that it doesn't allow that particular trick. And what that trick actually skips is it skips going through the first dungeon, uh, Southern Ruins. So in this run, we will actually be going through Southern Ruins. Um, we're also on version 1.0, which is the base version of the game. And the reason why we're on this version in particular uh, will be more apparent uh, later on. But mainly, so yeah, the, the main difference as far as strats go 
is that we do not do the, uh, the really hard RNG uh, wrong work that is presented in any percent unrestricted. And so what, what we have here as a result is we have a, like I said before, a, a more consistent run that's a, a bit, a lot more competitive, I would, I would say. And the reason it's also more accessible is that this run works on version 1.0. It doesn't work on the latest version, unfortunately, because Nintendo patched uh, wrong warping, but it does work on version 1.0. And at least the, uh, the, the base version is a lot easier to get a hold of if you have a physical copy of the, uh, of the game. Uh, but yes, that is, that is what we have presented here as far as the category goes. Um, you might have also noticed that I am speedrunning on the German version. And the main reason why I'm on the German version is mainly due to less text boxes. Specifically, the, uh, the main skip as far as text boxes go is that normally on English and I think a number of other languages as well, when we activate a warp point, we get two text boxes for it, but in German, we get one. So, small little time save there. Overall, the languages are like only seconds apart, but hey, the, the nice thing about the Switch is that it is region free, so whatever language is the fastest, we, we just automatically have access to it. In that sense, it shares the same DNA as Link's Awakening remake on the Switch, which also coincidentally has German as the fastest language. Funny how that, funny how that works out. Yeah, it's also for a similar reason, but not in the same way. Like, we have the faster waypoint text box. It, there's only one text box for waypoints, where Link's Awakening Switch, it's end of dungeon, like exiting a dungeon, which is still a warp, is also one text box, and that's why that's the case. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So, always one. Always one. Yeah, we do. We do activate a couple or a few. Um, we do activate a few warps uh, throughout the run. In a longer category, like all dungeons, we activate a lot of warps, so it definitely makes a bigger difference in something like that. But we actually do need to activate a, a few warps here and there. There is one warp that we absolutely have to activate. Like we have no choice. It, the game requires us to do it. Um, but for the wrong warps, we actually do need to activate a, a few of these uh, of these warps. And again, we'll, we'll be able to we'll be able to explain uh, these things a little bit better as we as we go along and get to those points in the run. But for now, uh, we do have we do get to sit back, relax, and watch our intro cinematics of The Legend of Zelda: Echoes of Wisdom in Breath of the Wild style here. Well, I will say that I, I've noticed a couple questions or comments in chat. Is there something with you in Pennsylvania and speedrunning? Me in Pennsylvania and speedrunning? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, Apparently. I've never actually been to Pennsylvania, so I, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, what's going on in chat? You're telling me you're not going to attend Awesome Games Done Quick 2025 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and hey. speedrun there? Uh, Unfor <laughs> unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make it, but if you can make Aww. it, you definitely should. Oh, I mean... Yeah, unfortunately, I, I will I'm, not be yeah. able to be there. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to make it. I kind of have to. I'm on backup. I have to be there just in case Glubbers can't, which yeah, he needs to. Say, make it. Yeah, you better. I, I you, you better. Yeah. <laughs> I got a direct flight. I hope I make it. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll get, to, I'll get to show you a really cool trick coming up here pretty soon. Um, it's actually, it's actually really fascinating. You'll, you'll, you'll have no idea how, how I'm able to do such sorcery coming up here in a bit. I'll, I'll show you here in just a moment. Uh, but as we're, as we're going along here, we're just uh, going through the, uh, the cinematics. Nothing, nothing much we can really do to, to skip these. We kind of just have to go through them. And. Unfortunately, Nintendo didn't really give us a skip cutscene button, even though it is the year 2024. They did give us cutscene skips for the bosses, but they didn't for the actual cutscenes, which is weird. But alas, here we are. So here's a here's a funny little thing: is you'll you'll see me mashing through these text boxes, 
but you'll also see no hands. Oh no. <laughs> oh, but Josh, how are you doing this? Well, what is the sorcery? Well, um, as per well, as per the leaderboard rules, at least uh, for Echoes of Wisdom, we actually allow turbo controllers for text box only. So we are able to just let the uh, controller do the do the gameplay for us as far as text boxes go. So yeah, we actually do get to just sit back and watch. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first. I've never seen a controller that can do turbo without holding the button, so I was actually kind of confused. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, when I and, when I first um, got this controller, I didn't think it I didn't think it would do that. But then when I messed around with it, I was like, oh. Oh, this is broken. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is silly. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, the other day I was racing Ninpalk in any percent, and there's some downsides. He got like this really cheap controller, but it was hard to turn off the turbo. And during the beginning of the run, we just had Link pulling like bombs and bomb chews all the time. And it was, oh, no. it oh, caused no. us to we'll have to reset our run like 50 <laughs> seconds in. It was, it was nuts. He returned it to GameStop oh, no. the next day. Oh no. Yeah, at, at, at first I at first I was like losing a little bit of time when I was using Turbo and I was like, this doesn't make any sense. Why am I losing time? But I realized I had like a, a, a different um, rate of like a different rate per second uh, on the button setting at, at first. I was like, oh, well, that's that's fun. <laughs> Yeah, which but, specific controller do you have? I don't know what the name of it is, but when I was looking on like Amazon, uh, I, I can't remember the company name, but it, it, it ba Amazon basically just called it Nintendo Switch controller, and then had like a bunch of different like variations of that same name. But like, it, if you look on like Amazon, it looks like this. It's got like the uh, the, the red, uh, red and blue control set. It actually looks really cool, and I, and it honestly, is a pretty neat controller. Um, but it was yeah. like one of the first ones that showed up on on Amazon, and like the the, the reviews for it were all good, and so I was like, okay, this actually seems decent. I'll, I'll give this a try, and it was like nineteen bucks, so <laughs> nice, not not bad at all. And I realize this is becoming it, this is almost feeling like an advertisement for the Hashtag controller. Not sponsored. <laughs> I, I am not, not sponsored, sponsored by this controller. <laughs> However, if they do want to sponsor me, I, I am I am available for sponsor. <laughs> Uh, there it is. <laughs> the long con for the actual cutscene was just to get the sponsorships. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's why we don't skip the cutscenes. It's just for the sponsorships. <laughs> See, everyone ends up... That's kind of one thing that I like about allowing Turbo and there being so many of these different controllers that people decide on for whatever reason, is you get, like, every runner has their own controller and they <laughs> all love their controller because it's theirs. Yeah. Right? There's not, like, yeah. one definitive answer. Like, we, yeah, we all, like you said, we have all completely different controllers. And they all, I, I think even the turbo function acts differently. So, like, I'm pretty yeah, sure in the sure. way we interact with it during runs uh, is different as well. Yeah, I still have my regular pro controller because even though turbo sounds nice, I got to keep my Mario Party domination skills up. <laughs> there you Ooh. go. <laughs> so happy they brought that minigame back. So I think that uh, Joash and I both have plenty of mashing experience, both of us running Wind Waker. Yeah, good old, good oh, old Wind Waker get, giving us that, <laughs> that advantage. But like, I'm just, I'm, I'm glad to just let the controller do it now. <laughs> uh, yeah, just let it do its thing. You don't need to ice your thumbs or anything afterwards. So true. Oh, I actually do have like a wrist thing that I would have for that. Uh, for completely different reasons, but it's really funny that you fair. say that. So I mean, one I, time. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I do have like a new Wind Waker JP disc and I was thinking about running no MSS like after GDQ so who knows maybe oh, I will need to take ice baths for my hand soon. <laughs> yeah same hey. here because I, I, I too am planning on going to that at some point so who knows. That one and that I, one uh, has longer hovers than Wind Waker HD does which is what I'm yeah. used to. Yeah. Okay, we got some really clean movement for the skate here. Notice how Joish is holding down the Y button before jumping so he conserves his forward momentum. 
before jumping on the table so he doesn't have to stop. Ooh, you're doing this method. Yeah, that, that method I did there with the, the triple table is a little bit more consistent um, than running around the bookshelf because you cut it really close with the guard. And if you mess up the uh, the table jump, it, you, you will most certainly get caught. And I think it only loses like a second, so it's, it's not that big of a deal. It is so, so now funny. I get to let the controller yeah. play the game again. <laughs> yeah, it is so funny you mentioned that because the method you did, I could never get down. So I just do the walk and stop the guards at the tables, and I'm weirdly consistent more with that. I guess different oh, strokes for different folks, I suppose. Yeah, it is, it is kind of funny how that how that works. I, I feel like there's a, a number of strats that are kind of like that for different people uh, in this game. Like some things are just more consistent for other people. Which, I mean, even with this game as a whole, I feel like each of us in some in some places have our own like unique strats for doing certain things, whether it's for consistency or there's just multiple options for us to do that are just up to preference at that point. It's yeah. really cool to see. Yeah, I guess that's one really good sign of a good speed game is um, variety and player expression. Especially oh, yeah. in something like the intro sequence, because I mean, sure, this is 12 minutes into the run. It is, you know, fairly linear and whatnot, but seeing player expression relatively early on in a linear section, that's pretty neat to see. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's cool that we do get to see, like, even even though we do have a lot of cutscenes in the intro, we still get to see a, a lot of interesting things uh, during the gameplay segments, which I do really like. Yeah, like coming up here, once this dialogue with Impa closes, the game really begins with movement since we get the spin. Ooh, yeah, I hope you guys are familiar with Majora's Mask speedruns and specifically enjoy Deku Link movement. <laughs> we love Deku Link, so now Zelda gets to be Deku Link. Hey! hey. Yeah, but unlike Majora's Mask, I think this intro sequence is a lot shorter. It, it is. <laughs> yeah, that And a lot true. more interactive. <laughs> Yep. And he's those tight jumps there, that's some pretty tight timing with the spins and the jump. You could easily fall down there. I've seen even world record hold there for unrestricted Ruben fall down there in his records. Ooh, you're doing the new oh, one. I oh, I thought you were going to do the yeah, new one. That would have been so sick. Yeah, I, I refuse to do those jumps. <laughs> yeah, I've been putting the table more just because I want to get more runs out of early game, especially in unrestricted. Oh, yeah. Only loses like about a second. Yeah, but right here, we've got, like, a really good example of echo efficiency. Normally, the game would want you to copy that boulder and drop it here, but with a knife height with the bed stairs, you can just drop a bed, and the wood will break the wood. Oh, I didn't get the there. Okay. Ah. Dang. There's a cool little thing that you can do there where, for some reason, when you bounce off of the end of that railing, you keep your momentum and it redirects you towards the cutscene or where Zelda goes to in the cutscene. So it shortens it by a little bit. She doesn't have to walk as long. Mm -hmm. And right here, here, if you to do it, get down the waterfall faster. Yeah, for some Me. reason, you move down the stream faster if you're underwater for some specific reason. Oh, weird. I mean, I did take, like, hydrodynamics class, so maybe it has something to do with higher velocity lower on because of pressure or something. I don't remember. It's been years. And this now makes the second Just... GDQ in a row where we talk about science. <laughs> I mean, I, I won't mind, given the fact that my, my schooling is in chemistry. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> shout out to Vanadium, and shout out to people that knows what that even is. <laughs> Alrighty, now we're now we're getting into the overworld. And we get to see our good buddy the Zol, or as Fry likes to call it, a man. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I just really like this little cutscene because Zelda like gets ready to I don't know hit it with the rod or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we, we just also, run off. Yeah, we we square up and then we just leave. Yep. And right here, just a quick little bed staircase over the sea urchins. Beforehand, we used to pick up a rock to copy the sea urchin down there, but it was creating a lot of problems because it was slower, and that Zol over there would notice you and break your bed staircase. But by jumping over the sea urchins, that Zol likes to play nice, so it's no longer a problem. Also, and we, it's more efficient to get it up there. We also get one singular rupee. Yeah, you know that's say. like a... Yeah. 
Don't spend that's it CG's. all in one place. <laughs> yeah, yep. that green rupee is gonna cost you gold split because I always like cheer whenever I miss that green rupee because that means I'll gold going into southern ruins. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that they're paying homage to Twilight Princess by including rupee text. <laughs> also, if one rupee won enough, let's get 50. Hey! Hey, let's go. That one did also have rupee text. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, and we're past, yep, we passed by a bunch of echoes. I guess it just screwed with my mind a little bit as someone that's more used to unrestricted because we usually get the tree, trampoline, and sign echoes. We will get the sign echo eventually. That's some foreshadowing right there. Just not yet. Yeah, we we <laughs> we take what is the uh, the the biggest meme echo of of the game, and it suddenly becomes the most powerful one in the game. Yeah. Do you mean the bed or the sign? Because they're both valid answers there, I feel like. I was talking about the sign, but you do raise a good point. <laughs> I just love that you made a bed staircase just to go over the trees and kind of out of bounds. Oh yeah, beds are <laughs> amazing in this game. Yeah. Beds yeah. are like beds the are strongest incredible. weapon in the known universe. I love this. I mean, we completely so skipped yeah. the boulder from the bed. <laughs> You know, it's it's the bed and butter of the game. <laughs> the bed and butter. <laughs> I love that. I hope my I hope my applause is coming through right now. <laughs> well played. Yeah, that that deserved applause. I had a uh, reason to answer the question: How many beds do we use in this run? And I didn't end up getting to the end of that thought, and I probably will at some point in the next month. But uh, I stopped at like thirty. We use the bed a lot. That's <laughs> yeah, a short run. It's from it's roughly a bed a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting until there's a low percent. And that's just going to be only X number of beds. Ooh, yeah. it's kind of we want to talk about. It's a it's funny you mention that because there is technically oh, no. a low percent category this game because the first echo of the game is a table which you use to escape the jail cell. And it turns <laughs> out it's the only echo you need to beat the game as uh, thanks to a few discoveries, as well as Ninpalk, he was the first person to complete a run of table percent where he only used the table, which limits your options, but also you can't bring up the echo menu, which brings uh, the wrong warp trick later in the run. It's much harder to perform and much more tedious because you can't, it, it, we'll get to the technical parts of that mm -hmm. later, but table percent, yeah, there is already a low percent category in this game. Oh, jeez. With table percent, yeah. if you count that. You still go through Southern Ruins and whatnot. Also very important, we kind of talked over that cutscene when the wrists are appearing, but that is some guy's wife that fell into the portal earlier. And that wife is very important because we're about to do wife jump by making a bed staircase off of some guy's wife. We can completely skip this cave. Thank you, someone's wife. Thank yeah, you. so Thank you, the Blake. interesting thing is we, we were calling it... I think we were calling it woman jump for a bit, and someone was like, no, 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 these characters have names in the code, and they went into the code, and the character's name is wife. So now it's wife jump. <laughs> oh my god. What a, what a, what a way to yes. go. <laughs> Alright, now we're entering the first dungeon, Southern Ruins, and we talk to this boulder, and... It is massive. There's a switch on the other side. It's just so big, we can't possibly push it. But then try is like, hey, I got an idea. We'll use my magical bind powers so we can now move large objects. And it's going to come in handy. In Unrestricted, we talk to that boulder, get the bind ability, and warp out. And then do like the trick there. But since this is restricted, you're going to see more of the dungeon. And there's going to be some very creative uses of various echoes and the bind ability right here. It's also what I like to call budget ultra hand. <laughs> I guess you could say that. And now with the power of the beds, we get arguably the most useful echo, or one of the most useful echoes of the run, if not the most, the strangula. Strangulas are very useful, allowing you to shoot webs, which give you very good mo uh, vertical mobility. So you can skip all that platforming section. And they're also hard as rock, which will come in handy later. But first, we're going to get another enemy echo right here, the Ignazol which have fire properties and are gonna be very useful in many situations, including in combat and puzzles. 
In old routes, we used to get the dark nut with the up this elevator with the sea urchins, but recently it's just been shown that the Ignazol is much better than the dark nut for various reasons. And Joe is going for a little strat where you put down two of the three possible beds that you can put down there on that elevator to get a little bit of time back. Not as much as if he did three. Yep. Yeah. Just saying, but we're lowering the total bed number and uh Yeah, I know. You 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 beat my time with three beds, I get it. <laughs> yep. That was not where I was going with that. I was gonna make a joke about maximizing the number of beds, but you know that too. Yep. <laughs> And this little 2D section here is also a showcase of why Ignazol is much superior to get, because in the past routes when this game was new, we used to put down beds and tables and carry it over as it caught on fire, but that was a bit slow and kind of made that room a bit of a auto-scroller. But it turns out using Strangelas and Ignazols makes it way faster. Coming up, we have the uh, the Link Fight. And Link Fight is like... It, it, it looks simple, uh, but it can very easily go wrong. Oh, also, nice snapshot. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Gotta take a picture of this moment, you know? So, Igni's old stuns Link. Sometimes Link will turn around and just notice the Igni zone when he gets hit, and that will lose some time. Um, well, hopefully he doesn't do it here. Okay, no, he didn't do it here. Very good. Good. Nice. Good fight. Yeah, nice so, little snapshot. Gee. Yeah, I got a <laughs> snapshot Spencer and now thing. <laughs> yeah, so there is a good example of how how um, nice the Igni Soul is for combat. And now yeah, we get the sword fighter mode. Yeah, it's surprisingly nice. really, really good because in the past we used to pull away Link's shield with bind and then use dark nuts, but Ignazol just takes care of Link in two hits per phase, which is much more resource efficient. Yeah, it's more efficient, but also just thinking about it, the Ignazol, the thing that is a candle, does twice the damage as the Dark Nut, which has an axe. Which isn't immediately obvious, because the Dark Nut has a summoning level of three, while Ignazol only has a summoning level of two. So naturally, you'd think that the Dark Nut is stronger, but that isn't the case. I was also just thinking that a man with an axe is stronger than a candle, but you make a fair point. Yeah. Hey, I'm a STEM guy. I think about numbers. <laughs> fair enough. Mm -hmm. It's all numbers and logic. Yep. And here's some clever uses of the bind, since you can send try through a little bit of walls there. So you you don't have to go all the way down and loop around the ladder like we had in when this game was new. Speaking game uh, rooms in the game that have become more optimized, this room has become much more optimized with Ignazol. We can drop an Ignazol right here to take care of Baba number one, and then we can just pull out the rest. I've seen other people use sword fighter room, uh, sword fighter form in this room to take out the Babas. I've seen like TJs, for example, take out that left Baba with pull and then use the sword there. But I think Josh might be faster. This is just another example of player expression in this game and how it varies from player to player. That strat was very recently. I think it was maybe yesterday. I think Owen had posted that strat in Discord. I think it might be faster than using sword. I, I could be wrong though. I haven't like actually timed it though. But it's pretty cool though. And it's a little bit easier than sword fighter, in, in my opinion at least. Yeah. Okay, just a quick little movement of statue, and we're going to get into the coolest 2D section part of this run. This is probably the part of Southern Ruins that's been, other than like maybe the boss, that's changed the most in terms of optimization here. Catching this platform cycle, once players realize that you can just drop down the ladder by pressing A, you can catch that platform much faster without needing to uh, drag it with the bind ability. And right here, we get the ability to follow objects with bind. And this room changed a lot. In previous uh, strats, we had to go back to reload the room to get a more optimal cycle. But with better look and understanding of the strandulas and cameras, we're able to put down those two strandulas to scale the room much faster. Nice. Also, and here, you just put the bed on the button. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Yay. Puzzle! Puzzles! <laughs> hey! 
So uh, in that original room where we had the statue a little bit before, the actual switch that it goes on is a green one, which is designed for the green statue to go on. You can't just put a bed there. But that one's just a regular button for some reason, so we can just put that down. That. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people did not know that for like over a month. We would just place a bed down to make the statue follow us. But speaking of beds, this boss is going to take advantage of here. Like, the first hit, you might not know, you can just hit it with a sword right away. Because normally, the game expects you to bind the, the orb whenever, like, the golem puts his head down. But you can just place a bed on the head, ride it, uh, miss it, that... Oh, actually, you can ride it still. Some people use Strangelo, like TGH, other people use the bed to ride up at the top to hit the orb. And that's the boss. After just oh, a wow, few slashes and spin. Yay. Yay! Yeah, so... That's when... one of the... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, that's one of the two bosses that we're going to be fighting. And it is, in my opinion, one of the best bosses in the game. I agree. I was just going to appreciate a little bit. I agree. Yeah, so though, mm -hmm. when the orb drops, it's a consistent amount of hits. So I do a certain amount of sword slashes now, do a quick spin at the end to get a double hit for the, the last hit. Because you can quick spin in this game, which I actually didn't know for a while during my, my regular playthrough. Mainly, probably because you couldn't do it in Link's Awakening, and I was and maybe that, that was my thought process of it, but... You can indeed quick spin in this game, which is quite nice, and it does double damage. I mean, in this game, you could also jump without the rock's feather, so it just has sure. way more Breath of the Wild DNA than Link's Awakening Fun. DNA in some regard. Fun fact about... Or Zelda's just holding a feather. <laughs> yeah, that, that too. <laughs> Fun fact about jumping. Um, I've gotten so used to jumping being on B on this game that I tried to press B um, on the new Mario Party to jump in certain mini games. <laughs> so that was fun. I about to say, how did that work out for you? Uh, not too well, <laughs> as you could probably surmise, but, you know. I mean, to be fair, B is also jump in Mario World. That's true. Mm -hmm. that, that is as well true. as do Super Mario Brothers, but also A can jump in that game unless you have the other style where B is run and A is jump for some reason. I forgot about that, actually. That is, that is a good point. Yeah, I've been just, just thinking about that game a lot recently because on social media, those Find Luigi posts have gained a lot of traction. That was like one oh, of the yeah. mini games. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Good times. Yeah. But important thing about that cutscene, this really sets it apart from Unrestricted, is you get a heart container and another Echo Summoning Triangle. So now your maximum summoning power is now four instead of three. I Meaning you could place a whopping four beds instead of three, as we'll see coming up in this skip right here. Yeah. We're going to place a lot more than four beds here. Yeah. So uh, look very closely at the ground. Jewish is going to do something after this cutscene, which is called uh, The Floor is Lava. Although only after a certain point, it's going to be interesting. I'll we'll explain it more when you see it. But basically what we're going to do is we want the game to preserve a return point after a void to be the last spot that we were on the solid ground. So we're going to specifically after a certain point not touch the ground. The floor is now lava. Okay, yeah, past the statue, the floor is sizzling hot, we must not touch. And then we're going to move over to these crates, move this one over to the left, and we're going to get Zelda a little bit stuck to where we're in a bit of a soft lock position. Like right here, and the game is going to fail safe, void us out, and save that position, and we are now removed from left's uh, spawn out zone, because if you get too far from left, she'll be like, what are you doing? Like, just follow me. But now we can escape this, and this skips like a two to three minute cutscene at Lou Berry's house, which is one of the biggest time losses that Restricted had over Unrestricted. But one side effect of this trick is we can no longer open the map to warp to another location, since the game expects us to follow left to Lou Berry's house, and the story wants us to go specifically there before leaving the area. 
but now we're gonna go over to Hyrule Castle to the side in order to fix this. We are going to play a mini game. A very Ooh. special mini game at that. Acorn. Yeah, it's the Acorn guy. Yeah. I love this guy. <laughs> he puts acorns everywhere. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> So we're gonna play this little <laughs> acorn mini game where you know he gets to scatter them all around. We get to go around collecting them. And so what Joe is just gonna do here is he's going to completely ignore them because we don't actually want to play a mini game. Yeah, sorry Fair. if y'all like acorn mini game. I, I I do deeply apologize, but uh, the acorns have given us the ability to warp now. Yep. So as one does, that's what acorns do. As you do, <laughs> yeah. As, as they do. So, so no surprise. Someone's never eaten an acorn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm allergic. Oh. But well, right now, Josh um, activated that one waypoint over there because that is going to be one of the most important waypoints for this upcoming wrong work trip. So we're going over by the Eternal Forest, where if we go too close, we're gonna void out. But if we place a sign, okay, so that didn't work there, but we're gonna lock on the sign and read the sign. And you're gonna look at the corners of the screen. As soon as the corners become like more cloudy, you have like a two frame window to bring up the map. And this is known as menu storage, which allows us to pull up two instances of a map slash menu at once. So once that map's open, he's gonna hold L to bring up the echo menu which allows us to keep a stored menu. And as you can see, he can't really see what's going on the screen other than the mini map. And we're gonna go to that warp point, head back to the still world. And now that we have this storage going to the still world, we're gonna open up one instance of the map to select a waypoint close to Southern Ruins, just any waypoint works. And then we're gonna press minus again to open it. And then as soon as he selects that special waypoint we activated, he taps D-pad right and then A soon after as a screen transitions. And whoa, what's this? Whoa, We're suddenly inside whoa. a pink dungeon. Oh, finest of parts. And now there's Link. Where are whoa. we? Hello this there. <laughs> is the inside of Null, the final dungeon slash air of the game. So the reason why that works is the game has two arrays where there's waypoint data. One that has the overworld waypoints and the other for stilled world and dungeons. So that trick basically by having menu storage to activate a waypoint and that specific one that we did with the two instances, specifically we selected one waypoint to warp to and then we had the second map hover over that other waypoint. That other waypoint has a array that shares the same array as going inside of Null who and okay. what we did, basically, to make it simple, is we transferred that warp point from the overworld into the still world array, which warps us inside Null. It's a bit of an index warp trick, similar to Majora's Mask, in a sense. I was about to say, there's, there's a question oh. in chat. How are skips like there. that even... <laughs> What? Okay, so that skip was found by complete accident. Uh, a fellow by the name of Gymnast86 was, quote, messing around with glitchy stuff. Oh, well done. That was what he said. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is a valid strategy. Yeah, there was another Breath of the Wild runner that originally discovered menu storage. Gymnast messed around with menu storage and found the random wrong warp, which brings you to a random warp in the overworld, which is used in Restricted to escape Null. But then later on, it was found to work to warp to set locations in the stilled world once you carried it over. Also, we. I'm sorry for talking about that glitch. But what Josh did was he took out those orbs, which are enemies before they spawn, basically spinning 11 times before Slash of the Sword to skip a lot of enemies, including Lionel. And here's very important. He's going to get an Ignazol ready, and he needs to break the switch and pause on, like, see that frame right there? Perfect. When you Whoa. see that purple glow <laughs> and that sound effect, you hit the switch on the same frame and you save the game. Because if you let that switch break, since this game is weird when you warp to Null early, Link isn't there and the game will soft lock. So you need to create a save as soon as that switch breaks if you don't want to get soft locked forever. Now we've got Whoa. a little bit of a weird room where we're split. 
uh, with combat between Link and Zelda. Zelda takes care of the enemies quickly with the sword fighter form. Not so easy on Unrestricted, where you have sea urchins. Unfortunately, Link can get skill issued quite easily with the Freezerd, but you can use the Ignazolds to take care of it. That could be a bit troll too. And now here, since the paths are split, you would think, oh, you would go ahead like Link is on your side and go through a 2D section. But we're actually going to backtrack because another consequence of warping the null early is since Link doesn't spawn in this room, there's no barrier that traps you from going into Link's side. So you can just follow Link in this side and completely skip a 2D section and completely cheese this puzzle of a strangula. Because normally you're supposed to be on the other side to guide Link up that. But no, you could just do that what? and completely skip a section. Oh, okay. Yeah, it <laughs> skips uh, my fa what was my favorite part for a little bit when we would have to go through the other direction. We mm -hmm. would go in this 2D section where we would need a keys, and it was the one reason that we needed a keys. And for some reason, people called it Keys Force One. So I loved just calling it Keys Force One. That's the only reason I like it. Yeah, that room, that 2D section had some really cool platform cycles that you can make with the strangulas and the keys. There's really, really cool movement. So it is kind of sad that it's eliminated from the run, but it is faster and less annoying. Oh, by the way, this is the entrance to the final boss right here. Oh, okay. We yep. <laughs> well then. Okay. So this is Null. The fight is split into three phases. This is phase one where we have three arms going out of the main orb phases. So phase one has five sub phases. Three of these are going to be involving pulling arms and revealing Null's weak point. And then after these are going to be hands that we pull out extending from the walls. So here, Josh is going to quickly grab these hands as closely as he can and pull the hands until the tendons turn white. And when that happens, Link will target that with a quick spin and that will instantly destroy the hand. However, Link's AI can be a bit cheesy in this fight as you'll see later phases of the fight because he can sometimes quick spin too early or sometimes too late. But in this first phase, it's pretty controllable. We just pull the tendons until they are white in the middle and a quick spin just easily takes us out. Sometimes the the targeting system of this game can leave a lot to be desired and try when you latch on to something can miss because the arm is moving, oscillating around. And when that happens, sometimes you want to play it safe, just let the arm slam down and then move out of the way. But these attacks can be kind of scary because these attacks with Null's hands do two hearts of damage. Luckily, it, it's just two hits until you're dead. And on Restricted, it's much more generous since you have four hearts. And every time you pull out an arm from Null, whether it be from the main body or the wall, a heart drops. So in that sense, the game is quite forgiving in terms of health regeneration. One thing you do have to look out for for Null Phase 1 is if you're a bit slow on this last arm, maybe not in this sub-phase. Well, the first one, if he sends out a shockwave, Link can walk over slow with a shield, but in that one, you really don't want the hand to slam down because Null will do this devastating AoE effect where he basically poisons a big portion of the wall. As you can see with that hand twitching, that's when Null's preparing that attack, and it can be quite annoying to maneuver around because Link can walk into it, and it also does a lot of damage to Zelda. But that is Null Phase 1 complete. Yes. And now we move on to this really strange underwater section for Phase 2. This one definitely confused a lot of people, probably on your first casual playthrough of the game, because you're chasing Null and you're not sure whether to pull arms and whatnot. But by all intents and purposes, this is an auto-scroller. There are some mildly threatening obstacles like these cyclones, and you might see these... A fish spawn that represents the Jabul Ruins boss, but you could just swim into them and it dissipates because it usually attacks in the background. So it, there's no real threat in this section. And you might be thinking, okay, so we're just following Null through here. Do we do any damage anywhere? But as I mentioned before, it's a bit of a de facto auto scroller. So while in a casual playthrough, you might be like pulling the arms to try to do damage to Null, it's kind of useless because all you need to do is just get up to this section here after these two like columns of cyclones appear and right like in between the two Null is vulnerable you just drop a sea urchin and that's phase two complete and yeah and now here comes the hardest part of the run this is Null phase three and 
Here, movement is very key. You really want to take out these arms as fast as can. Ooh, unlucky on that one. Ooh. Because in each of those sub phases with the orbs, Noel now has five arms. Three of them have tries attached to them. So your main priority is to take out the arms that have tries because after a while, they will summon a boss attack. And we really want to avoid those boss attacks as much as possible because they waste time, especially that second one in sub phase one of phase three in which you'll get like a bunch of sand tornadoes. Now we're just going to take care of this phase with the Ignazols, and now we're going on the wall phase. But unlike the previous one, enemies will begin to spawn. This time there will be Dark Nuts. So Josh is going to pull the arms while trying to avoid the Dark Nuts using the Ignazols. But he also has to be careful after the second arm is destroyed, but after a certain time period, that hand will appear from the ground. You need to avoid it. Getting caught by that hand is bad news because it can waste up to like 30 seconds because you don't have very powerful summons to get rid of it. Ooh, Link is a bit slow. Ooh, that was close. And now we move on to sub phase three and these summons are a bit more deadly. In this one, we will have three Ganons that appear with spears. They don't one hit you in restricted, but they one hit kill in unrestricted since you only have three hearts. A lot of these boss attacks will kill you in one hit. And Josh is trying to take out these try hands as fast as possible in order to avoid, nice. That avoids the Scorch Chill spawn, which is avoidable since we have Strangulas, which act as rocks to ricochet the boss. But this is a very clean null fight right here. But now we got two sub phases left one with the walls and another one with the arms, and they are by far the two most volatile parts of the boss. But right now we have the Lazalfos phase, which are very annoying enemies to deal with. They do a lot of damage, so Josh is going to put down Strangulas to distract the Lazalfos. And sometimes Moblins. Moblins play a bit nice, but they do a lot of damage. Oh. This is very... okay. Not getting two hands right away is very, very dangerous because you really want, ooh. Oh, he no. Went, he, went, he went around that strangula. That, he went over the strangula. That. That, yeah, is, that was, oh. That was I, unlucky. I, I it did, you got the auto, that. okay, good, you got the auto save. I was about yeah, to say, you didn't do the it. safety save. Okay, yeah. good, good. I, I, was this about is, to do the, I was about to do the safety save and then I saw the auto save and I was like, okay, we're, we're good. Yeah, but that is a prime example here of what makes this boss so deadly. Be the Lozalfos are mean. You might think you have this fight down, but the Lozalfos are up to some really, really mischievous tricks. And if you don't get those two wall hands off right away, ooh, that's annoying. We're going to see tornadoes. Uh, yep, that's a victim of Tri's uh -huh. terrible aim. Yeah. That yeah, can we happen. Can blame that one on try. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I can blame a lot of things on try when doing this fight. <laughs> blame a lot yeah. of things on I like as to... well. Oh yeah. Yeah, Link is yeah, Link the is one taking... that I've blamed stuff on. <laughs> Link is taking the scenic route to get to these arms. Yeah. He, 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 okay. He so yeah. <laughs> it can take some time. I like to say that, you know, if it's a competitive game, Link is a Bronze 5 player, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, he just no, kind of I... runs around. He gets stuck on the boss sometimes. Sometimes he just stands there jumping, spin attacking in the air. Don't know why. Oh, oh it drives me mad. But you'll get it eventually. <laughs> so, uh, that's why Josh like is grabbing Link, Link, by the way, so he doesn't just go off to nowhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's more important to grab Link in Unrestricted, too, because when you only have Sea Urchins, because a good thing about having Ignazol when you're damaging Null when he's vulnerable is the Ignazols have good aim, but when you're dropping Sea Urchins, uh, not only can they sometimes not hit Null, but Link can jump around them and just completely avoid doing damage to Null, which can make that damage Link process annoyingly slow. I just love the concept of Link needing one of those, like, child leashes. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, Link might have the Triforce of Courage, but he sure as hell ain't wise. <laughs> I literally call it Baby Jail. That is exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, th 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 this is why he was not the main character in a game called Echoes of Wisdom. There is no... Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, that, that was really clean oh, case, but we got the Lizalfa. He, he is trying to redeem himself here right now, though. Yeah, but let's see how well he plays with the Lizalfos. Yeah, that, that's, Again, that's the real kicker yeah. right there. Yeah, in this phase, it's really important to get those two first hands really quickly, because if you let the enemies spawn like the Lizalfos, it can quickly get really out of control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Ooh, nice. Okay, Lozelfos is distracted by Link, but a bit of a tough spot. Okay, what well, good, good idea just to not get gout by the hand because mm, that, that could okay, that lose good. a bunch of. Good. Yeah, that Ooh. was very wise. That Ooh. was very, that was fast. Nice. Wow. Okay, now this is the final sub phase of Null, and this one is by far the hardest because there are four random boss spawns you could get. It's not a set order like the other two, and this one is thankfully a fortune one. You get four Ganons and the Talus, and you just stand in the corners, and the Ganons can't hit you. <laughs> So ideally, you should pull out those last two try arms, and we don't get another spawn because yeah, the random spawn now. you get there. Yeah, yeah th this is. Yeah. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Not completely over yet. I can see some people die here at times, but we got really, really lucky with that spawn. You got basically the best case scenario there. All right. I'm just glad that you didn't get zero. Goma. GG. That's gonna be GG here in a minute. Yeah, so yeah. timing will will come up for pretty soon. Uh, timing will end when the prime for I'm sorry, the prime energy gets pulled out of null. So the second it starts yeah. flying out is when we end time. Uh, the nice giant glowing Dorito. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're gonna do a little bit of matching here, going back to the discussion on matching. Thankfully, I'm a Windbreaker HD speedrunner, so we can finish this off here. And <laughs> and there we have it. That is time. GGs. G. Way to pull out Thank the Dorito. <laughs> Way to pull out the Dorito. So yeah, there you go. That is 80% restricted for Echoes of Wisdom. For, for Echoes of Wisdom. Not a uh, not a bad run. I will I will definitely take that. No, no, got to uh, showcase uh, how silly the fight can be sometimes. But hey, I mean, good showcase, <laughs> I would, I would say. Yeah. Agreed. And that, that was absolutely awesome. G chat, keep giving your GGs, uh, friends. Tell everybody who you are. Where can they find you? And what are you currently playing? And when does the knockdown drag out brawl happen between the three of you in this category? <laughs> yeah. So. Once again, I, I'm Joe Ash. Uh, I mainly speedrun. Uh, I'm mainly speedrunning this game, although I'm mainly uh, grinding all dungeons, which recently we got a new all dungeons route. So if you would like to check that out, I will be doing a lot of runs of that. Um, but yeah, I mainly do speedruns. I, I do like Wind Waker HD. Uh, I've done Majora's Mask as well. Uh, but I also do playthroughs, uh, game dev, um, randomizers as well. Um, speaking of playthroughs, I will be doing a Twilight Princess HD playthrough uh, this week. So yes, but yeah, that is Ooh. that is what I do. All right. And I am uh, Glovers. You can Google me, and you'll find first a glove brand, and then me. Not at all affiliated. Uh, and but you can also find me at AGDQ2025 doing exactly this category. So, hey. Uh, yeah. yeah. Be sure to go watch that. And I'm Lunatic J. I'm primarily a speedrunning YouTuber on youtube.com slash Lunatic J at like 103,000 subscribers strong. And I sometimes stream on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Lunatic J. Been speedrunning any percent unrestricted for Echoes of Wisdom. And I am on AGDQ 2025 as backup for this game. And he has good videos. Definitely go check him out. He does. He has one about solar flares. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Again, yeah. thank you all so much for that. That was absolutely amazing to see. And it's just mind blowing how quickly all of you have just absolutely like gotten through this run. It's It's been so cool to watch. GG's one more time for Joe Ash and everybody here. Before we go to break, I just want to remind you that uh, all your subs, your Prime Gaming subs, your gift subs, and any bits that you cheer on this channel, the GDQ Twitch channel, help support Games Done Quick, Hot Fix, and shows like Express Lane or the previous show, Awfully Silly. So if you enjoy watching speedruns like these, consider subscribing to the channel to get access to our super cool emotes and chat with others. Hello, friends, and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your break, stayed hydrated, all that good stuff. Before we get to our next run, I have not one, but two quick announcements, and they are all marathon related. So, what you should be doing is joining us in celebrating Black Joy with Black or Back to Black from February 6th to February 9th, 2025. You can find out all the info you want at gamesofquick.com slash black in a flash. Flash, black in a fash. Uh 
black in a flash. I'm, look, I'm old and words are hard, okay? Anyway, that's the first announcement. The second announcement, let's see if I can get this one right, is GDQ's next All Women and Femmes speedrunning event, which is Frost Fatales 2025, will be live from March 9th to the 16th. Visit gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales for more information on the event. <laughs> we did it, fam. GG's. Anyway, enough of that absolute inability to use words. We are going to be moving on to our next run, which is less of a speaking thing, but more of an awesome musical thing. We have Alar running the any percent run of the Rocky Horror Show video game. So take it away so I can stop talking, please. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Alara. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Thank you for that warm introduction, Asuka. Um, but you know, it's not really a movie night without friends to watch the movie with. So I brought some company with me, uh, and I would love to have them introduce themselves. For example, hello, Ufi. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, Alara. I am Clockwork Ophelia. I, uh, I am, I guess, kind of a speedrunner, but I'm definitely more of a Rocky Horror fan, so I am here to get comfy cozy and watch a good movie. I mean, speedrun tonight. And, uh, J.O. Hi, everyone. I'm J.O. Um, my van got a flat tire a few miles down the road. Can I use your phone? <laughs> and then, last but far <laughs> from least, the beautiful Ati Tree. Hello, darlings. The thought of watching this speed run and giving my live reactions <laughs> fills me with anticipation. We're going to be waiting for that one for a while, I think. Okay. <laughs> well, it, it, it's going to be that kind of run. I love it. Yep. Big time. <laughs> so uh, I will give you all a little bit of a historic context for this real quick. Um, if you're not aware, Rocky Horror was originally a play, then it became a movie. Um, the original IP has aged. Um, but it's still extremely historically important. So just for context, you know, it, it, when it became a movie, um, it did not do very well in theaters. And then they decided to fix that by making it a midnight showing. Um, and it did so well. It is still in its original run to this day. It's been in theaters for 49 years and a continuous run. Um, and it was very much embraced by the punk scene, the goth scene, the LGBT community, and a whole bunch of other communities. So even though a lot of the content is a little jaded, um, in a lot of respects, it still holds a lot of historic significance because it gave these communities at home. Um, so be aware of that if this you ever go watch the movie or the original play. Um, it uses a lot of terminology that is a little less acceptable nowadays. This, this is what Tim Curry did before he went to the only place that is unaffected by capitalism. Tim <laughs> <laughs> this movie was the breakout role for Tim Curry, but we can ga I know, I love we can gash about that all we want because we have a long opening cutscene to watch, and time does not start with that cutscene. So I'm gonna hit new game. Let's go, and then erase data, and now we can actually talk and j jibber jabber about this movie and this game and the play and everything else. Mm. Um, so fair warning. Um, the text is there, and it's a lot of talking. Um, but I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. How strange was it? So strange they made a video game about it. Hmm. Well, I'll get my <laughs> DVD player and... Oh, I'm sorry. You meant the video game. We're, we're running the video. Game. Yes. Not we, the movie. We are going to play the video game. We're going to go as fast as possible. Um, And fair warning... Things are probably going to go wrong. <laughs> this game is an RNG hey. nightmare. <laughs> and I mean that in all the best ways possible. I genuinely love this game. The music, the music alone makes this a fantastic time. RNG, you say, BRB downloading. Oh, you you are like Honestly, me. Honestly, Oscar, this is very, very a you game. <laughs> this is a very you game. <laughs> Look, I'll make you a deal, Asuka. If I get this in, I'll have you on couch. And if you get Done. this in, you have me on couch. Deal? Done. Deal. 100% deal. This, this, this game is the game of all time, and I absolutely adore it. <laughs> yep. 
to be fair, it is also a love letter. And as much as I have my complaints about it, it is very much an, an act of love. And the developer worked really, really hard and absolutely nailed so many parts of it. Oops. And you're going to see a lot of references to the play, a lot of references to the movie, and they're different references. And you're going to see a lot of references to just gaming in general, because the dev is a nerd, very much a nerd, <laughs> and one of ours, and great people. I love it. J A N E T, I love you so. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, it's a musical, okay? You're lucky I'm not belting the lyrics at the top of my lungs. <laughs> oh, don't tempt me. I'm, I, I mean, offered to do some riff rap, but I live in an old construction <laughs> home, and people <laughs> downstairs and next door would hear me if I did that. <laughs> I may or may not have intentionally set up my microphone to not peek, just in case I sing a little too loud. <laughs> I'm here for it. All right, time starts when I gain control of Brad, which is going to be when these text box close and Janet walks into Brad. So, time. All right, let's go. So, Good luck. yeah. We're just going to have a nice little stroll as we uh, make it to the house at the end of the way. I'm sure there's going to be nothing out of the ordinary going on. At most, it's going to be a bunch of rich weirdos. I mean, this is what I have to go through every time I need to fix a flat, so I completely understand. So I actually, yeah, tracks. they do actually use the play. Um, it's the front left hand tire that breaks down and that line gets used a lot. Also, this jump is extremely important. This You're going to see this section a lot. Brad is the only character that can easily make that jump for some reason. Ooh. I hopefully won't show off why it's a problem, but, you know, I might have to. Well, I mean, Barry Boswick's like six and a half-ish feet, so that makes sense that he can, he can make some pretty pretty wild jumps. Oh, the problem... That, that at least tracks. Yeah. The <laughs> problem is Brad moves through that section just fine, um, but the other character that does that section... Um, well, I'm not going to give spoilers. <laughs> but um, there's there's weird physics involved. Yeah, it's really okay, something. You just, tracks. You've got lots of practice on that section. Alana. I have lots of practice. I have too much <laughs> practice on that section. <laughs> so for context, uh, when I got this game, my copy was bugged and I somehow ended up on the dev build. Um, which means that my copy of the game didn't fully like reset when you hit new game. So I had to play, I only had access to the final character um, for the entirety oh, no. of my first like two days running this game until the dev was like, oh shoot, yeah, you are on the dev build. How did that happen? Whoops. Um, we figured it out. We reverse engineered the problem and they got me back on like the normal version of the game. Would you say they did the time warp again? Oh, there was so much time warp. I was going for the same joke. I was thinking something about the, the wrong warp, the wrong warp. The, we got there. I also love people in chat going, wait, this is a thing? Yeah. Like, it has only been out for two months if now. If that. It's been out yeah. for two months, if that. Yeah, like this is me. This is me overestimating. This is mm -hmm. a beautiful new game. It's like general shout out, like all four of the, the runs on this particular episode, all of them would qualify for the second round submission for AGDQ. That's how new all of these are. Mm -hmm. I actually tried to get it in and unfortunately didn't make the cut, but it's fine because it just means I get to submit it again next GDQ. Exactly. Right. Uh, and all the skill. Oh, that was bad. That's that's exactly the one thing that couldn't happen. So the good news is this is this Brad has the one good recovery strat for this section. And you get to see a little trick early. You throw a box and you jump on the box as it's phasing through you. All right. That's just platforming right there. Uh, Ooh. There we go. <laughs> and sometimes you catch the block with your head. It's fine. It's perfect. No, how am, I on, how am I on this cycle? No. I was about to ask that. How did that even happen? Oh so my this gosh. game is uh, incredibly cycle-based. However, the cycles persist through death. Uh, so. so. Some of them do. Yeah, that's yeah, kind of the problem. Not, 
Not every cycle persists through death. <laughs> so basically, the game has infinite continues um, because the dev knew that they were making a very tough game, and it's very intentionally a very, very, very difficult game. You won't see it as much in Brad's section, but as the game continues on, it'll get exponentially harder as the characters get exponentially weaker. Um, but basically, there's three kinds of cycles, air quotes. Um, there's enemies that spawn in when you reach certain points in the screen. So they're not really cycle based. They just spawn in when they spawn in. There's enemies that spawn in when you see them and then continue to space stay spawned through death. Um, so once they're spawned in, they're on a cycle all on their own. And then there's things on the map that just exist no matter what, even when they're off screen before you get to it. Oh, wow. Best intro ever. Yep. Oh, oh, they did this so well. Yep. So welcome to Frank 1. Uh, yes, there is a Frank 2 boss fight. Frank is... Spoilers. Yes. Oh, am I gonna... Am I okay? Got this. Yeah. Got this. There we go. Oh, that was nice. nice. All right, and now one of the best moments for fans. <laughs> I'm glad we caught you at home. Uh, could we use your phone? Can we use your phone? You see, we've had a blowout in our front left-hand tire. So you got caught with a flat. Well, how about oh, that? How about, how about that? that? Why don't you stay for the stay night? For the night. <laughs> Maybe a bite. Maybe a bite. Could show I you my favorite my obsession. favorite obsession. <laughs> so they're in a bit of a hurry. Making a man? So, come up to the lab. See what's on the slab. See what's on the slab. I see you shiver with. The game pauses. That wasn't me. The game pauses. Is that what that is? That is so good. Wow. You did so well. Like, that wasn't me First hitting a button. That was just oh the game saying, no, nah, I'm just going to pause now. The first time you showed me that, I was like, did that just actually happen? Yes. Yes, it did. That is glorious. Oh, uh, this is not a great setup. Uh, we're making it work. Yeah, there we go. Go. Sometimes some enemies that's go so Oh, this jump can kill you, by the way. Just randomly, you can just go down that and it'll, you'll just die. Um, oh, well then. So any boxes you throw through some enemies, some enemies they'll go through, some enemies that'll get caught and stop for some reason. Uh, if you're wondering why, uh, that is a great question. Um, but moving on. Um, <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason. Like the, the hitboxes in this game are suggestions at best. Depends. So sometimes they're suggestions. <laughs> sometimes um, you stood five tiles away from that hitbox, therefore you're gonna die now. Oh, okay. And uh, if you're wondering which one you're gonna get, uh, I'm wondering too. <laughs> For all that your tracks. mechanics related questions, may I refer you to the game's description on Steam? A strange journey. Uh, what? Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, that works. I'm going to take advantage of having the extra HP and just damage boost through that. So, welcome to boss fight number two. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the beginning and the end of this man's acting career. <laughs> oh, so fun fact about this movie, because I know entirely too much trivia about this, having worked on this production for three years. Um, uh, the reason Rocky doesn't have lines in the movie is because they wanted to hire a bodybuilder. And the the bodybuilder was so bad at acting, they literally just cut all his lines because it was easier. <laughs> I read that somewhere. I was like, yep, that's okay. Yeah. When, when you think about it in that context and think about certain scenes from the movie, you're like, Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. In a way, he was perfectly cast. Yep. Uh, also, oh no. Am I getting the glitch? Um, I might die now. Oh no, the glitch. Yeah, there we oh, go. What the? Oh, what? No. Wait, oh, what? No. <laughs> uh, well, how about right. that? <laughs> so, there's a non trivial chance that at some point during this run, we're going to get a that's never happened before. Unfortunately, that has happened before. That is a known glitch. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's never happened before, though. What? Uh... Dude, what you doing okay. there, Rocky? So we're just gonna... We're just gonna run into Rocky and die. 
He just he just wanted to show off. He wanted yeah. to flex his pecs a little bit. Oh my goodness. Y'all, this is one of the games <laughs> of all time and I love it so much. Why haven't I played this yet? That's your I problem. I it's never existed said, this for like 60 days. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna die again. Oh yeah, what is happening <laughs> with your sprite? Uh, uh it's, fine. it's fine, don't worry about it. It's fine. I it's may okay. or may not survive this. <laughs> We're gonna find it's out. fine. This, this, it's fine. This is a, this is a T pose, but with a mid air variant. <laughs> Would this now be called the anticipation oh, glitch? Oh my go. goodness. Oh, that was. That was something. Oh my. All right, I'm intentionally leaving that HP there because I'm about to go from one boss fight into another. Um, the difference is this boss fight. Is an auto scroller. A. Also, Eddie um, demonstrating that, you know, Eddie only has half a brain. Eddie, please. Um, so, a little bit of context for yes. you all because I haven't been able to say this yet. Every boss fight in this game, every single bit of it, it's all RNG. Every little bit of boss <laughs> behavior is 100% <laughs> RNG. There is one bit of like maneuvering that I do where when I throw boxes, I jump first because it stops the behavior of like them attack jumping over your attacks. That's the one bit of thing that's not RNG in their behavior. <laughs> oh, rest in peace, meatloaf. <laughs> and there we go. Rip. That was almost a hitless Eddie, but Eddie was a butt at the end. <laughs> oh, Eddie has a reputation of being a butt. You didn't see us in practice yeah. where it was just like, Eddie, Eddie, oh. please, Eddie, please. Oh, that was... Yeah, that was rough. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's okay, in death, Eddie has a name. His name is Robert Paulson. Oh, anyway. my goodness, the double movie reference. <laughs> <Stopped>. <laughs> so what's some of y'all's experiences with this, this, this fantastic IP of a movie or a stage show or video game? Uh, also, not fun as much fact, as it should be. yeah, there, there, this right? is actually the second Rocky horror game um, because there was right. one based on the movie for, I think, the C64? Amiga. Oh, it was no, either C64 I, or Amiga. Oh. It's old. Yeah, I think also the ZX or for our British friends, ZX Spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm smelling a Rocky block at some point. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm down. So we do this, <laughs> we do Pocky and Rocky. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> I do have a game called Rocky Rodent. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> the, when are we doing the Rocky <laughs> special? <laughs> you fight in that game with hairstyles. Oh, no. So it tracks. Okay, I need to play that game. What? <laughs> so Rocky <laughs> Block for GDQ when? <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Funny story about the game. I picked it up at SGDQ last year and threatened people to learn the runs. So I, I have to make good on my threat. I was going to say, that, that's what you always do. You're always threatening people to, <laughs> to buy games and then run them. The problem is, me and Asuka have a lot of overlap in the kind of games we enjoy. So now I need the, the run. Yep. <laughs> I mean, if you got a PS2, I'm learning the bouncer right now. So. I love the bouncer! Let's go! Let's, Let's go! That's one of my favorite games on Ironically. Same! Ah, uh, the 30 minute cutscene simulator. Mm. Oh my goodness. I've debated learning that speed run so many times. It it is it is one where uh it is also RNG and the game can just say, you know what, your run's dead. We don't care. Your run's dead. Oh. Okay, game. I'll just restart now. So you know how it's great. Brad um had clothing and when he took damage it was ghost and goblins and lost clothing. Um, mm -hmm. Janet, you will notice, seems to be lacking one of those qualities. So, welcome to <laughs> yep. the first character change, where now we're playing as Janet. And uh, the downgrade for Janet is, Janet doesn't have clothing, therefore she doesn't get a second hit. Uh -huh. You have one HP for the rest of the run. Dang it, Janet. <laughs> I moved a tiny little bit too close, that was mo on me mostly. Also, this was the very first glitch that I found, and the very first glitch that got patched out. You can entirely skip this section, 
by just going to the right, coming back to that first screen and dying, and it saved your progress because the entire room was one giant hitbox for a checkpoint. So we didn't have to go get this box. We could just go here to the right and go and die. So file all of your complaints to Alara for having to complete the rest oh, of the Oh, this got patched out day one before I even had oh, a file. So I can't oh. even down patch to this version of the game because I never had the version of this run where it, the where it worked. It worked in the dev build and it worked in day one right before the day one patch. Oof. got a comment in chat that I can't disagree with. Whoever did the sprite work for Frank and Burner deserves both a raise and an Emmy. And an Emmy. Oh my goodness. Facts. Facts. Okay. So these, I I very kindly call these pop uh, spikes because they just pop into existence and they are a nightmare. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, now it's just kind of safety time because that's just 90% of this run. It's safety strats and backup strats. You, There's very few Yoku strats. Blocks. Now we have Yoku Spikes. Joy. Okay, uh, I'm gonna line up because there is a setup that may or may not work. No. Okay, so to get around that, that floating skull, I have to go at a very specific time and I cannot believe that lined up. Ooh, nice. Funny enough, someone in chat asked something that came up during uh, our, our rehearsal earlier, which is uh, yes! about a rebirth of genetic <laughs> opera game. It has been brought up to the developer, uh. and we are praying that we get a repo video game, but, you know, licensing. I'm probably watching that after this episode of Express Lane again, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. reasons. Uh, so, movie night at GDQ is what I'm hearing? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do do not tempt me. Yes. Also, yes. <laughs> I own the all of these movies. I own Rocky. I own Repo. I own both Devil's Carnivals. The yep. only one that I do not own because I just haven't gotten around to it is I don't own Shock Therapy. Ooh. <laughs> Which, for those of you that don't know, Shock Therapy is the sequel to Rocky Horror, and yes, I do mean sequel. It was made with the same characters, but none of the same cast. Mm-hmm. Okay, so lab segment. And there we go. Uh, there's going to be a lot of waiting around for spikes. Sorry, just how this run works. Sometimes you gotta go slow to go fast. That's honestly the motto in this run. Like half of it is just knowing when not to go fast. Ooh, and the other half I cannot believe recovery. that hitbox cooperated. Very nice. That yeah, was very close, ma'am. I may or may not have given Ufi a heart attack with that. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Don't do that, please. Uh, oh, Don't do that. Box, please. Box, box please. please. We're building a staircase. <laughs> That that enemy is so confused where, right now. Where does the enemy go? He's just, he's just vibing. He's he just goes vibing. In this Don't worry about it. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna. Uh, okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Uh, grab this, and now we get to meet the most obnoxious enemy in the game. Um, who here played Star Fox? Oh no. Do you remember our good friend Andros? Yes. You know the oh. adage: birds are jerks. Uh huh. Now they're homing birds. Brains are jerks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only we have the brains to find this phone. Uh, no, okay, we're dead. <laughs> you got a second jump there somehow. Yeah, yeah the that. physics in this oh. game are some of the physics of all time. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to survive this. Uh, we might be in a bad pattern now. We're going to find out. Uh, we're definitely in a bad pattern now. Oh, we're in a real bad pattern now. Oh, oh no! Well, oh no! Oh, oh, well, oh, well, oh. I can't tell if the looks on the brains is anger or just disappointment. Yes. I feel like they look kind of confused and shocked. Okay. I think they look hungry. So Would I need to first try this segment because if I don't, it's going to be a nightmare scenario. So wish me luck. Go for it. You've got this. Okay, okay. Uh, nope. That's bad. Uh, but it's recoverable. We're okay, we're okay. Beat it down. Oh. 
Is it cooperating? Oh no. Uh, okay. Okay. We're good. We're good. There we go. Nice. Oh, yeah, done. Oh. oh, I love that celebratory rock toss there. You do. Like I'm trying to hide from my creator and his minions. Weird. Rocky, you can talk in most <laughs> versions of the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They were very aware of what they were making. Um, but now they're going to go play bridge because they are really big fans of bridge and um, hearts are the Trump suit. Absolutely. Hey. There's the math too many style. hearts there. That's way too many hearts for Bridge. Well, they're but playing they, they multiple played another rounds. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's multiple it's rounds. Oh, multiple rounds. rounds. They're, they're, oh. they're, they're speed running Bridge. <laughs> I heard that snort and whoever did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is the end of our dear friend Janet, which means now we get introduced to our third and final bullet playable character. None other than the wonderful Dr. Scott. Um, to which you may be wondering, um, oh no, Dr. Scott, <laughs> how does that work? Yeah, Dr. Scott, isn't Dr. Scott in a wheelchair? Um, to which my response is yes, and they accounted for that. Um, so yes. here's the thing about wheels wheels don't work the same way legs do for some reason, and the solution to represent that is Dr. Dr. Scott is Janet, so Dr. Scott only has one HP, and Dr. Scott has ice physics. Again, don't worry. Alara has oh, darn it. a lot of I thought I could make that. Section. I've got too much. This is the character that I could only play as Dr. Scott for like the first few days of playing this oh, game. Because every time. I, uh -huh. I just remember you going, like, you had finished doing your casual playthrough and you're like, okay, I'm going to go do so. Like, I'm going to try and route out the run and all of that. You just loaded back in and it was just Dr. Like, Scott. Right, so this screen also has a setup and go. And there we go. That section is a nightmare. Nice. That. Um, so this jump, Dr. Scott, if I get close to that wall, Dr. Scott cannot make that jump. Why? We don't know. It's w only would you Dr. Say Scott. In that spot. It's only in that would you spot. Would you say that jump is wheelie hard? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no. Jessica, my people, I love you. I'm good for it. <laughs> Someone needs to discourage, please. please. Oh, no, no. We're here for the puns. Uh, uh, you, you oh, oh, no. That's never happened before. Number two. The thing. Hey. Oh, my goodness. Uh, also, it's just worth it to wait for these spikes, unfortunately. Just the timing doesn't work out. And I have tried. Oh, a box. Okay. Box physics, please. Uh, no, I'm not losing the box this time. We're gonna wait and throw it. There we go. Uh, also, I don't know why Dr. Scott gets the time warp. Uh, the, the it's your big reward. versions of these songs tr are absolute bangers. Right? Yeah, this, this, this is, is amazing. surprisingly well represented with the, uh, Oh, the entire soundtrack is so good. Oof. The dev also wrote the music. Like the, the chiptune nice. version soundtracks again. This is this is a love letter. This is like one of the most on-brand pieces of media I've seen in a very long time. Just every little detail. Love I love it. Okay, so on to the next section. We are now in Doctor Frankenfurter's private back passage. I saw you. You just went right through this like. <laughs> Okay. Hitbox? What's a hitbox? Mm -hmm. I can so technically make that jump, rules. but it's it's <laughs> it's a sketch jump. Um, also, there's a couple of intentional deaths here, just because it makes a lot of things consistent. Um, that's kind of the, the name of the game for Dr. Scott. It's just, how can I make this somewhat kind of sort of consistent? Uh, no. I love that enemy getting repeatedly pushed back by the spike ball. It's so good. <laughs> It's okay, great. We're gonna jump on that real quick to save some time. Oh, nice. Let's go. That was close. Uh, this section, I'm just Ooh. gonna wait until they line up. Oh, perfect. Real quick. I'm gonna take a death here Ooh. because this setup is amazing. You just hold right, jump yes. on the thing. Done. 
Oh. Oh. Uh, oh no, brain, brain, brain. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Brain. Oh. Brain's not home today. <laughs> right, we're gonna try this one more time, and there we go. Woo. That setup looks so nice. I I love it so that much. Is sweet. Yes, it very much has task vibes to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this section actually has a speed tech that we learned from Ooh. a casual player of this game. Um, because everyone looks at those spikes on top and goes, oh, you can't make those spikes, so we just wait them out. Um, joke's on us, apparently, you just hold right. Hooray. And oh, no well one done. realized this for like weeks and weeks and weeks until like a casual player would like actually you can just go underneath them. Dr. Scott, for some reason, can make that run. Always the best when it's the casual players that are just like, I have this this thing that nobody has ever thought to do. And it's the dumbest go. thing of just, <laughs> just just don't stop. Just go. Just go. It's always it's always just fun go. to watch someone wheel out new tech like that. Oh my god. Hey. Yes. yes. Uh. Sorry, not sorry, Ufi. That 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 type of wheel pun just spoke to me, so well done. <laughs> All right, let's put the brakes on. No, no. <laughs> All right. So I, I will never get tired of your puns, teacher. I love the puns, though. Teacher, you're doing comms with me forever. OK, you and Ufi are now my permanent couch. Promises, promises, dear. <laughs> Planet Schmanet Janet. Also, my troop was called the Planet Schmaneteers. <laughs> nice. Also, welcome to Frank 2. Frank never cooperates. It's either first try or fifth try or 20th try. Uh, Sounds about right. Uh, are we getting cooperate? Come on. I think it's two more. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, 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 <laughs> so, see this thing about. Something. Yeah. Oh, no, no. That was my oh, bad. Oh. So, you know that thing where I have to jump over Frank, but Frank's jumps are RNG. Oh, Frank? Mm. Frank? <laughs> what happened there, Frank? Frank, Sir? please. Okay, we're gonna let Frank jump like, over. Oh, this chair? Yes, I think I'll keep this one. <laughs> Four, five, six. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> okay. pull, pull uh, it, Drew. Drew. Frank, Frank, uh, you, uh, you can, there. You can Frank. have it back, but uh, you're going uh, to. Uh, <laughs> that's a new one. That is, in fact, a new one. That's what, the third it's never <laughs> happened before? Yeah, that's, yes, that's a new one. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Frank, please. Last time it was Eddie, now it's Frank. Uh, uh, no, Frank! <laughs> Frank, why? No, you needed to keep going. Why did you stop to attack? Welcome to RNG boss fights. No. Oh. Hey. oh. Wait, wait. Oh. We oh. Can, we can make okay. this work. Oh, no. No. We can mm. uh, We can no longer make this work. <laughs> oh, come on. What was the hitbox on that? That was like, oh, like, that the right. between Janet and the tip of the whip. That was insane. No, that was wild. Oh, my goodness. Yes, well. So welcome to why I say. <laughs> Oh, this is bad. Uh, oh, 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 there we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, first try. First try every time, sometimes. First try. <laughs> Blurps to try. Blurps. Blurps. That, that was a, yeah, that was about to say, that is a blurs boss fight right there. Uh, it's, it's always like first try or 10th try. It's nothing in between. <laughs> Frank either cooperates or just says not today. <laughs> Nope. So Fun now back from the chat. This dev is also the dev that ported Spark the Electric Jester 3 to the Switch. Yep. Yes. That somehow tracks. Truly someone of many talents. And the angry <laughs> video game nerd game and a whole bunch of other things. Nice. Very good. So everyone's favorite part of the show, the floor show. Hey. And if you like the sprite work, um, too bad, because I changed my mind and we're going to play something else now. Let's play Mario. Hey! <laughs>
I have Two no games words. For the first I have no words. <laughs> <Just> enjoy. <laughs> Na, 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 na. <laughs> it's one of my favorite bits. Of it's the thing. I'm so glad. This is fantastic. Things because we get to watch the floor show. Jack, can we get some dance emotes going on? Because I feel it's appropriate. Yes. <laughs> Anyone have anything rose tinted? <laughs> some rose colored glasses, maybe. <laughs> Accessorizing. <laughs> Love it. Also, if you've never watched the movie and you're trying to understand the plot based on this video game, um, good luck. Um, not that they're trying to make... understand the plot based on the movie, good luck. <laughs> That's also true. Uh, if you're just trying to understand the plot, good luck. Yes. yes. <laughs> also, this segment is absolutely cursed, and it is all just wait for cycles and try to get setups. That is this entire segment. So if you see me going slow, it's because... Going slow is the fastest way to do it because it's that cursed. Oh, I don't know why Frank. Why did Scott just stop going? Scott, please. Must have gotten something stuck stuck in his wheels. In mid air. Parking brake. Mm -hmm. Parking brake. Okay, and wait for the brain. Uh. Uh. Well. <laughs> Ooh. You're finding new things today. I don't want to keep finding new things today. <laughs> I don't want you to keep finding new <laughs> things today either. All right, we're going to spawn a floating skull. Uh, no, no. Uh, oh, mm. oh. Okay, so now we're going to do the double spawn where I'm going to grab the thing, spawn a brain and a skull. Uh, that was a little too far. I do need to get really, really close to spawn the, the skull is the problem. There we go. Then... Kill this brain. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. And now we go nice. until here. Spawn another skull. Wait until the spikes. And now wait for a brain. That is that. That is no. That's a mood. Oh no! <laughs> I've been that waiting for a brain for thirty-five um... years. Okay. Okay. We're good. We're good. <laughs> and now for my life. Or my mind will may well snap and life will be lived for the hey. thrills. Okay, coming up on the final boss fight, <laughs> um, which is technically unfinished content. I won't say why because it'll be changed in an update. Um, but time will be on the final hit on the final boss, which has I think six HP. I don't know. I don't have my notes open. Six feels about right. Yeah. Again, the amazing music. No kidding. Also, aliens. <laughs> if you're wondering where aliens came from, so it was yeah, everyone who so watched the movie. Everyone. <laughs> right. Yep. Like, if you're wondering where it was suddenly alien came from, um, so is everyone else. Yep. So they give you back rad for this section because the dev said quote it was too hard without the extra health <laughs> and then I first that's always a good sign oh no uh uh, -oh. uh, uh please mm. okay please. so we're here now oh, we're no. just getting shot at forever <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna take that death it's gonna be faster uh okay it no okay we're good we're good Ooh. Uh, three three uh, oh, unintended uh, pause. Pause track. It's pause uh, track. Oh, Don't worry about it. Oh, no. Oh, okay. And it's just how you build Antissa. Oh, no, not again. Oh, <laughs> patient. <laughs> okay. <sighs> and time. GG. Wow. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was fantastic. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the duck hunt ending. <laughs> Tremendous. <laughs> Love it. Oh my goodness, RNG didn't. Oh my know. god. <laughs> I told you, the duck hunt thing. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. I'm hoping we've got time to play through the credits, given how underestimate this was, because. Um, I was about to say, yeah, Laura, what is your PB again? Um, So my yeah. PB actually changed right before the show, because I did an off screen, unrecorded practice, and I broke sub 30. <laughs> 
Nice. But before this, I think my posted time is like 31 something. Still, I mean, the RNG fighting against you as it was, that was. 32. Yeah, that was a 32 36. I'll take 32 36, honestly. Yeah, right? Given how much of a nightmare the RNG is in this game, 3236 yeah. is totally acceptable. I would be happy with that in any marathon setting. Then, crawling on the planet's face, some miserable insects of the human race, lost in time, lost in space, and meaning. They put the EU ending. I love that they put the British ending and not the American ending. Nice. But yeah, the, the American ending doesn't have the final song, Superheroes, and it kind of skips past this little segment, and it just shows them crawling out of the wreckage after the castle beams into space. There's actually also some cut content that was going to get re-added in, where you had to escape the castle as it was going away, kind of Super Metroid style. And then, like the original, the outro credits is science fiction double feature. Yes. Oh yeah, as we're watching watching the credits, uh, first off, again, everybody, give GG's. That was such a fun run. Where can everybody find you? What are you currently playing? And any other shout outs? Go. Okay, so uh, first things first, lots of love and shout outs to the rest of the Lady Arcaders community. I brought some of them here with me, but the Arcaders are all fantastic people. And also, you know, more fems and speedrunning, always appreciate it. Uh, I stream every so often. You can find me at Alara Cutie. Um, I do my best to play games fast, and I do my best to entertain when I'm not playing games fast and just trying to be fun. Um, but past that, thank you so much for having me. This is actually my first Hotfix appearance, and I'm going to be at GDQ. Um, I'm actually running this again for another marathon later this week, so if you want to see me, go check out No Holidays Lab. But I'll be at GDQ, and I'm going to be running none other than the Amazing Pizza Possum. And my co-op partner is actually the next runner, Grey, Go Grey Googlitch. Um, but you know who you should really follow? My beautiful comms people, starting with Clockwork Ophelia. What? Thank you, Alara. Um, as I'm saying, y'all should always go follow Alara. She is doing fantastic things. And Pizza Possum is a great game. Keep your eyes peeled for that. And maybe uh, keep your pizza ready. Because the possum, who is Alara, might steal it. Uh, if you enjoy my voice, you might hear me at uh, AGDQ. I will be doing some hosting from one of the online positions. But other than that, uh, I stream a lot of FF14. If that's your kind of jam, come find me over at Clockwork Ophelia on Twitch. And uh, J.O., how about you? Well, hi, friends. I'm J.O. You can find me here on Twitch at J.O. underscore E-X-E. Um, I tend to play a lot of randomizers. I've been like is super into tunes lately. And yeah, come on, yeah, come by. And then Tea Tree, anything you want to say? Um, goodness, if you want to see me play video games, you're probably better off just watching more speedrun marathons, because <laughs> I'd say I do that more often than anything else. Um, I will also be part of the group of many people in this call who will be at Awesome Games Done Quick in January. I will be both uh, part of your hosting team along with Ophelia and the lovely Asuka424. <laughs> and I will also be running a game at some point. So if you, uh, if any of that sounds interesting to you, check us out there. Uh, and I stream very, very infrequently at twitch.tv slash t3. So one last thing I do want to say, thank you so much to Ophelia because Ufi is actually the person who taught me Pizza Possum, which is the game I got into GDQ. So lots of love to you for that. Oh, jeez. Yeah, thank you all so much. That was so fun. I'm so glad you were able to come on. But before we go to our next break, uh, I have a task that I give you every single time we do an episode of Express Lane. And that is, friends, I want to see the first best friend to put exclamation point Discord in the chat because if you do that, you can find out info on joining the official GDQ Discord and adding the hotfix role. You get the role, you can keep tabs on all the upcoming events, you can talk with staff and showrunners, and a whole bunch more. But again, you need to type exclamation point Discord. Hello and welcome back, friends, for some more Express Lane. Before we head on to our next run, I have some more announcements and hopefully I'm not going to butcher them this time. First and foremost, you should be heading over to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix to check out our season four schedule and just check out the schedule for an in-depth look at all this week's runs and all of the new shows that we have this season. It's super cool. And for like, I think the first time ever... 
did you know Hotfix actually has merch? Uh, so if you want to support JQ Hotfix and get a really cool t-shirt, you should check out the 2024 Season 4 t-shirt at theyeti.com slash A-G-D-Q and theyete dot -E -E com slash A-G-D-Q and check out the shirt. It's so cute. It has Coop and all the shows and it's super cool and I've already pre-ordered one because yeah. Anyway, moving on to our next run, which is going to be another one showing up at HDQ 2025 by this particular runner, we have Gray Greg. I can't even I can't even say your name, Gray. Gray Googlitch with some UFO 50. Take it away. Because I have lost the ability to speak today. Hey y'all. I am Gray Googlitch, and I'm gonna be showing off for you today uh Barbuda 100 percent So Barbuda is the first game in the chronology in UFO 50. Uh it's just a lovely game. It uh it uh, yeah. So uh Oh, that that oh, right there kind of yeah. illustrates uh, the kind of game that Barbuda is. It's uh, it's pretty mean. Mm. It kind of explicitly goes out of its way to be kind of mean. So you can do a quick Love reset, it. and uh, we'll start time then once this reset starts. So we'll start in three, two, one, go. All right, so we're going to avoid Good that luck. and not get crushed. Nice. <laughs> hey. All right, so this is a very finicky and precise kind of run. Uh, there is a lot of really tight movement. Uh, the main run, the gold run, is routed within typically about half a second per, uh, per run step. I think if, uh, the current lead is, is two seconds ever. It was really recently set with incredible RNG. But yeah, this is most of Barbuda. This is going to be precise jumping. It's going to be a lot of climbing ladders. It's going to be a lot of avoiding narrowly avoiding traps and taking out enemies in very precise ways. Uh, first thing we're gonna do though is we're gonna this is 100 percent We've got to collect all of the items in the game We've got to collect every coin in the game and every gem in the game So we're first gonna pick up our main our first major item, which is the umbrella So those little acid drops that are falling from the ceiling those acid drops get blocked by the umbrella It's just a real simple way to not die to this uh, It is completely optional. Uh, so you don't actually need it to complete the game. In fact, you don't really need most items to complete the game We're gonna grab that we're gonna grab this coin up here and we're going to pop down this way, and we're going to hope for really good bat RNG. Bat RNG is possibly the worst part of this game. These bats do oh, not geez. have any real set defined pattern other than go random direction. Uh, they will bounce off things, and they'll do that kind of stuff. But we managed to not get hit. We took out a bat. Uh, any delay or slowdown would have nullified the run as far as like an actual submission for like either gold or uh, cherry. Because they are that tightly routed. Uh, but our, our next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a trick called Slime Skip, where we're going to get to the top of this ladder. We're going to jump like that. We're going to jump across here, go up this ladder, and I think we're on time for it. Either way, I'm going to go for it. Yeah, we're on time for it. So, we can get up here. Nice. Before that slime gets there and take it out, it's very, very, very tight. So, we got Slime Skip. That was good. We're going to grab this item right here. This is the necklace. Necklace is going to activate some elevators we're going to see later. Uh, but first, we're going to go down. Normally, in the gold and sherry runs, we would go up there. But we're going down so we can go around and collect another ruby that's kind of along the way. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're going to avoid that bat. We're going to climb up this next section up here. It's also why we need the umbrella. This is the only way you can get through this section. Uh, yeah, uh, there really isn't much going on in this next <laughs> tiny little section other than a bunch of ladder climbing. But that is the majority of this game. So let's put a little bit more about what else can happen in this. There's a red phantom that can show up. That red phantom will appear oh. in the middle of the screen, and if it touches you, it is game over. Uh, it's kind of random for its movements, too. So it's, uh, yeah, it's not great. Can, can it appear in any of the rooms, or like just specific ones? All right, so if you look at that little map down in the bottom corner there, um, you see where that mm -hmm. dot is? Yes. That dot represents the red phantom. Uh, it can move in any direction. Oh. Uh, Potentially skipping over multiple... Oh, I went wrong. Well, wait, we're going to go through here. Um, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, so every time you transition rooms, the Red Phantom transitions rooms in any one of those directions. So sometimes it can skip two rooms, which means you're never really safe from it. Like right now, it is one screen down from us, uh, but it went a different direction. It's far enough away. Still only a couple moves away from catching us. We're going to not trigger that switch because triggering that switch would really mess with the run. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Aside from killing us, which we, we obviously don't want to have happen, uh, triggering that switch kind of messes with our path going back down for one of the later portions. So there is a backup path. It's just about three minutes longer. <laughs> oh, yeah, it takes a lot of a uh, lot of time to get through that backup. 
Oh, caught a good cycle in the elevator. That worked out quite well. Uh, yeah. So those elevators are only activated because we have that necklace. Uh, if they, if we didn't, it wouldn't be moving. Line up like that, right across here, and climb up yes. yet another ladder. So with, like, explain to people that don't know much about UFO 50 and how, like, it, there's, are, are there, well, I'll ask a dumb question. Are there 50 games? There are at least list? 50 games. <laughs> oh, that's all I'm gonna say. I, I know you but, mentioned. Yeah, there's, there's, there are 50 games. <laughs> they are uh, reasonably large size. Uh, specifically, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a huge collection. Um, some of the games are shorter, some of them are longer. There is a an eight plus hour JRPG in there. There's a couple of other RPG style games, um, along with a lot of puzzle games, a lot of things that have a lot of replayability. Barbuda is the most straightforward of them. Uh, I mentioned it was the first in the chronology, mm -hmm. so. In the, the meta story of, of UFO 50, this is the first game that was made for it. And it shows because oh, that's gotcha. why it's a little rough and it's a little mean. And the guy who made it in the game is uh, was trying to make a point with it. Uh, it's sort of like the introduction into the whole like concept of him making games as a whole. So, uh, okay, so we didn't actually do this in the right way. If I would have done it the right way, I'd have gotten across. But it's not that much of a time loss, maybe like five seconds at most. Not even. Um, gotcha. But yeah, so in the chronology, this is the first. It is very rough by its design. It's all committed jumps. Mm -hmm. It's all very tight. It's very slow at times. And it's incredibly punishing. Uh, and I mentioned this uh, in the, uh, the moments before the show. It's inspired comments like, it should have been UFO 49. <laughs> People <laughs> really don't like this game. <laughs> really? It just because it's it's so difficult, or it takes a long time to figure out where you're going. It doesn't give you a lot of direction. It hides a lot of stuff. Oh. Traps everywhere. Oh, like that. <laughs> exactly. Like there's really there's one clue that tells you about this, and it doesn't really say much. Hmm. Gotcha. Uh, the the next thing we're gonna get also another hidden thing. Uh, I, I kind of glazed over the fact that we we picked up candy at one point. Uh, candy lets us climb ladders twice as fast. We got that mushroom. As it does? Yeah. Uh, our ladder movement is now twice as fast as it was when we started. Uh, that's This is not great mushroom RNG. Actually, it's pretty terrible mushroom RNG. Get, get back here. Get back here. There oh, we I go. I love those optionable, optional hitboxes that that just showed. Oh, yeah. The, these The hitboxes in this are uh, special. Put it that way. <laughs> All right, so that's what allowed us to get into this room over here. We're going to take our first intentional death of the run, where we're going to fall into this pit and get our blood sword. Uh, it's basically a tricky death warp in this room. The only way to get there is to jump into that spike pit. So, forced intentional death to make that happen. Uh, blood sword hits twice as hard. It's just really good to have. All right, so we're going to poke this guy in the back of the head. We're going to pop down here. And we're going to pick up our second item from a shop in this game. Uh, and that is going to be a very special item. Uh, it has so many uses. It's wonderful. Everyone's seen it and interacted with it at some point in the past. It is actual literal garbage. It doesn't do hey! anything. It's just, it's yeah! just there. <laughs> it got 50 coins. Oh, that was perfect RNG for this room. I have never had that happen. The nice. bat just kind of, kind of walked up into our path. Oh, and then I followed it up with that. This <laughs> is a tiny bit too slow on the poke. But we got the, we have the ruby here. Uh, we're going to go on this way, and we're going to get another coin, which involves beating another one of these boomerang guys. And uh, yeah, that coin up there, so we're going to have to like, go off screen and then come back in. But it's fine. We got our push pin earlier, which allows us to break bubbles. And we're going to pop off screen, pop back in here, break this top bubble, and grab our coin. Uh, we're, Those are the sturdiest bubbles I've ever seen. They are incredibly sturdy. Uh, yeah, if you come at them from any other direction or without the push pin, you can't pop them. Uh, we are now going to go back this way. Uh, we're going to go up the same path we took the last time. Uh, we're not going to worry about picking up the gem, obviously, because we've already gotten it. But we are going to pop through this door right here. Take that same shortcut back. Uh, only this time, instead of dropping down, we're going to climb the ladders. Because with candy, it's actually faster. So these two ladders right here, uh, because we're avoiding load times by doing this, uh, or it would be faster if I didn't climb back down the ladder, um, <laughs> because we're avoiding load times, it's a bit, uh, just a tiny bit faster. Uh, Lounge Rare Rocks. Okay, that's the Red Phantom. Oh! Uh, 
that's actually a tiny little Easter egg in this game. Uh, if you come to this room where the Red Phantom is uh, with the text, it's the Lounge Bar Rocks, which is a reference to the lead developer for this game, the solo dev. Uh, Interesting. Lounge Bar is the band he was part of. Uh, so it's it's sort of an in-world reference to his uh, origins being the, the person who makes all the music for a lot of the games and in the later parts of the story. Uh, but yeah, little Easter egg. If you go in there with the Red Phantom, it says Lounge Bar Rocks. I love that. Uh, there are Easter eggs throughout all of these games. There are so many. Uh, as Asuka knows, and I'm sure several other people in the audience know, uh, I also run another uh, run called uh, Play Forever, which is a complete exploration of the... Phantom, please? I'm trying to do something here. <laughs> that's, that's not cool. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it's a complete exploration of the meta story. Uh, so I'm not going to know spoilers. It is a very spoiler-heavy run, but if you're interested... I do have that hosted, and uh, it is currently in submissions for things. Uh, but nice. yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pop up this way again. Now, the reason we could not break that block earlier is because we kind of have to go up where that title is, and if that block were missing, it would kind of ruin the whole pathing. So we're gonna pop up this way, go up this ladder, these la these ladders, and this elevator to get over to that side over there <laughs> where there's that broken wall. Mm. And a boop. And most people find this and think, oh, there's nothing. There's a second block. And a hidden uh, jump. Oh, jeez. And a hidden jump. Wait, what? And we're in the title. Okay. Yep, so we're going through here uh, two steps in, and we're going to hit up. We just went through a door, and we're now at the bottom of the castle. Uh, what? We're going to talk to this jelly bean fellow over here, and he's going to give us our, our last major item, which is the wand. Uh, so we have our blood sword. We're trading it for a wand. Wand is a ranged attack. Wand is really cool. Not what we're going to keep, though. We are, in fact, going to swap it back for our Blood Sword, because the Blood Sword's just better in all conceivable ways. Just for the amount of damage it does. I normally would take a Death Warp here, but I took that death earlier, and I don't want to do that. So, unfortunately. I'm assuming there's no way to replenish your, your eggs throughout the run. There is precisely one way, and uh, we can only buy one with the amount of money we're going to have. Ah, gotcha. But we, we can't do that until after we get through all of this anyway, so we just want to make sure we've got at least a little bit of comfort. Uh, I will still do one death warp, even though we are lower on lives than I would like to be. Because as long as we've got, like, two in reserve, I feel comfortable enough doing it. Uh, we are going to have to do this up here. If we had the wand, we could take that guy out, but we don't. So we're going to have to wait here for just, you know, a couple seconds. Jump over him. Go back this way. Uh, so this is going to pop us out into a section that we kind of passed through before twice, a uh, room where there are two slimes and a bunch of slime drips and all that. Uh, fortunately for us, uh, we don't have to worry about the slime drips anymore and those like slime puddles that move back and forth. Uh, they only take one hit now that we've got Blood Sword. So this will be real quick and real simple. Pop down here. Boop. Grab this gem yeah. over here, our second gem of the run. Uh, I mean, not, no, so this is our fourth gem of the run. Uh, two of them I, I call uh, Blow Skulls because they're skulls that you have to beat and then they drop just the thing um mm. if we had good bad rng here as well we could have used them for a death warp but we did not get that uh we are however going to just walk straight into this little pool over here because that's going to drop us on the other side of the room nice yeah all the egg locations where you spawn back into a room are set from the start so you can use them to traverse backwards through rooms pretty effectively okay the uh, speedruns tend to make good use of that in that specific room and in the one before it with that. Uh, this room is one you got to take really slowly because it's designed that if you try to rush it, you will hit every possible trap along the way. Ah. Uh. All right, we're going to pop these bubbles over here. We are going to slip down here, and we're going to climb an invisible ladder. Um... That invisible ladder is... Uh, there's one little hint that it's there, but it's really hard to find. It's something most people casually miss. Uh, if you go from the top, you can see that there's a ladder there, but you can't see it from the bottom side. So, got our last coin. We're going to oh. go for our last gem. Uh, once we get that last gem, uh, we will head towards... Uh, again, this is new routing from what I typically do. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit different than what I have submitted on SRC right now, but it should be a lot faster. Um, we're going to go, and we're going to take the back path into the castle. Uh, that's going to involve us talking to a guy who's got a big club, and he's going to break a hole in a wall. But he's only going to do it if we give him 500 gold. 
<laughs> it's pretty much only accessible if you do 100%. Like, that person knows their worth. Oh, yeah, it's because, like, that. 500 exactly gold, they'll let you in the castle. Like, no muss, no fuss, no messing around with the front door and the that key works. and the elevator. No, uh, no going past the really, really obnoxious Mimic. <laughs> the Mimic is maybe the worst part of this game. It looks like a regular chest until you're too close to avoid it. Ooh, of course. <laughs> it's just, it's super, super mean. But yeah, there's our, there's our friend with the club. It's just like, yep, 500 huh? gold. Like, all right. Yep, and uh, now we can just avoid these two guys up here because they actually cannot hit us if we move just straight to the left. Nice. And we're going to pop up here. This last little, uh, well, not the last ladder. It's the third ladder from the last. Uh, we are going to talk to this egg over here and grab ourselves a safety egg. We don't need it, but I want to because I can. Uh, so we spent all of our cash. We got our eggs, and we're going into the final boss. We've got every item that is in this game, and uh, yeah. Should be easy peasy. We want to hope to see I the boss. Like the, yeah. They're good. I just like the walking completely over the, the spikes, like no big deal. Oh, yeah. That, they don't give you any indication that that's there like that. Oh, that is. We got the worst boss RNG. Uh, that's time. Oh! <laughs> GG. And just like that, it's over. Uh, yeah, the boss is a little anticlimactic when you've got Blood Sword because it only takes one cycle if you really hammer down on the buttons. Uh, you can get four strikes in. It takes eight hits normally. With Blood Sword, it takes four. You can just get four in if you hammer really hard on them. But yeah, and yeah, um, <laughs> you might want to you might want to record this this particular little segment right here. Uh, what time was it? You, you, uh, it's a new world record. Oh heck yeah! Fifteen oh two. Fifteen oh two. That's fantastic. It's much, uh, yeah. actually, it's like what, 20 seconds off my, my previous record? Uh, it's something like that. that. Is... Yeah, it's uh, 21 seconds. Heck yeah. Uh, Jeez. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, given the, the RNG, that's also fantastic. I mean, some of the unrecorded stuff yeah. I did for routing, it's slightly under that, but still, world record, I will gladly take it and I'll submit it tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, this well was just a good run. <laughs> Green. And again, chat, give some GGs for the new world record time. If you have 050, you probably went 100%. 3G, where can they find you? What are you currently playing? And any other extra shout outs? Go. So, so I stream on twitch.tv slash Grey Googlich. Uh, I do three nights a week, typically Mondays, Wednesdays, and Sundays. I do a lot of randomizer content. I do a lot of, not a lot of speedrun content, but mostly randomizers and casual content. Uh, yeah, uh, that's that's something that's fantastic. Uh, as uh, as LR mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to be running Pizza Pass with AGDQ. Uh, I'm going to be running for part of the UFO 50 relay that's happening. Uh, first run of that, which will be Barbuda Gold. Uh, it's a little less stringent than Cherry. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It's a very very short run. Uh, this was about about 15 minutes. That's about four minutes and 50 seconds, roughly. <laughs> nice but yeah that's pretty much all i got going up yeah thank you all so much for uh, for having me <laughs> thank you for coming on and ggs again and congrats on the new world record <laughs> so happy about that all right. yeah all right chat sit tight we have one more run and we are going to be doing a race but Hello, hello, and welcome back to the final run of today's episode of Express Lane. But, of course, I have one more chance. Let's see if I can say this correctly, friends. If you missed out on anything that you see in any of our shows or our events, whatever, make sure you are checking out the VODs over at YouTube.com slash quick. And if you're watching those VODs over at YouTube, hi from the past. You should be heading over to Twitch.tv slash quick and watch us live. We have speedrun content all week, and we have the upcoming Marathon HDQ 2025. All right. So, I am not saying this category because y'all have been hearing me just absolutely not be able to use words properly. So I'm going to let our two wonderful runners, we are going international with this. We have Lucifer and Jupy running Yars Rising. So, Take it away, you two, and tell us what this category is, because that's a lot. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I am Lucifer9783, and this is Yars Rising. Joining me today, I have Jupy. 
Hi, I'm Jippy, also known as Cute Pengies. Uh, just, it's just rising um, long names, I know. I made those, you can blame me. <laughs> uh, the, the run that we will be doing today is called Escape Kotech, which is a fairly short name. Uh, it does have a, quite a few stipulations on that one. We have Normal Difficulty, Invincible Hack Off, and No Fife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will explain what all of those mean during the run, but GP, Perfect. do you want to uh, start this race? Yeah, so we're right now loading in on the normal menu, and I'm going to be counting... Uh, no, I'm... Not, Asuka is supposed no, to be counting gonna, us down. Asuka's going to count us down. Yeah. yeah! We need to focus on the game. Yeah. yeah. This all is right. run time. Exactly. All right, we're going to count down from five, four, three... Two, one, go! Good luck! All right. Thank you. We start off our lovely little speed run with two lovely little skips. We skip a cutscene and then some dialogue. And then we start with yeah. the gameplay proper. Yars Rising is a Metroidvania made by WayForward. Famous for Shantae, Rip City Girls, uh, Advance Wars 1 and 2, Reboot Camp. Uh, and it is published by Atari, the same Atari. Uh, well, after a few, you know, changes of hands and such. Uh, that produced the 1982 title Yars Revenge for the Atari 2600. Uh, Yars Rising is definitely a love letter to those Atari classics, including yeah, Yars Revenge, it's... but also things like Space Invaders, Centipede. All those... Yeah, we're going to be seeing a couple of those games, mm -hmm. uh, even in the run right now. Nice. Um, we should explain what Escape Protect means, because... Yes, we really should. All, it doesn't look like any percents or any normal name. Uh, basically, Escape Protect was a category that I devised uh, with the help of uh, Lucifer um, to basically kind of make the game more accessible uh, to, uh, to people, because um, any percent is long. Yeah. It's, it's a, a long game. It's an hour 40, normally, which... Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a bit of a long one. We don't really have any major skips. Big asterisk there. Jippy's cooking behind the scenes. Don't yeah, worry I'm about it. Hard. <laughs> uh, I am working hard to make this game even more broken. But for Escape Kotech, uh, we basically play through the first two acts out of five of this game. Uh, and, like every good Metroidvania, it ends on an escape sequence. Of course. As the escape do. sequence happens in the middle of the run, or you could say it happens at the end of the game, because um, Emmy is with us, uh, she thinks that um, saving the world is too much to ask, and she just wants to go to bed. Mm -hmm. She's tired. I mean, that's a, that's a mood. I mean, right there. Yeah. you you would too after an eleven hour workday, and then oh, we're doing corporate <laughs> espionage too after hours. <laughs> oh, by the way, that's what we're doing. We are committing corporate espionage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Proof of it. We're going to go into a stealth section. <laughs> nice. So here we're gonna be trying to dodge uh, guards that are, have very funny behaviors in the mm -hmm. sense that we're gonna abuse it. Like yeah, they heavily. are a bit of a joke for the speed run. Uh, but if if they do connect, which they might, if they're a bit random as well. Uh, it's forty percent of our life bar where we start at hundred, and yeah, also so big reset the room on us. It's a big risk reward, and basically, we try to not mess with the guards. But we still mess with the guards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are about to hit the first like major story beat of this run, where we hack into Kotex servers. Uh, and then we are going to get uh, caught, because uh, we're not particularly yeah. good at the whole uh, being stealthy part. I missed twice. Oh no! <laughs> I missed twice oh. on this hack, which 
I'm feeling <laughs> very, very sad right now. So yeah, we, oh, no. we got caught by our hiring manager, <laughs> Mrs. Davidson, and now we're being thrown in a cell. Didn't corporate punishment? Didn't take our phone hey. or anything, or search us, or <laughs> like, just get into that detention room and wait for your termination. <laughs> sure, <laughs> we'll... murder or firing? <laughs> you choose. This is. This is a joke that actually is in the the writing. The writing for this game is very funny at times and loves to poke a little bit of fun. Uh, but now Jupy yeah. and I are on to the first augment hack or the speed run. This augments are improvements for Emmy, uh, our protagonist. Typical uh, typical things like a weapon. Uh, Missiles, classic for a Metroidvania. Uh, the ability to wall jump. Like, all all useful things that we will be doing uh, in a speedrun. Yeah. Um, you've also seen us try to dodge things, which, if you have played this game, you might be like, but there's an, there's an option to make the game way easier and mostly the yes. in the game. That... Yeah. <laughs> That is the <laughs> invincible hack. We can. That is an accessibility feature that Way Forward has given our players, players of this game. Uh, we uh, separate the boards into uh, invincible hack on and invincible hack off. We are running invincible hack, invincible hack off to be a proper showcase of the, the speedrun. Yeah, I am not going so, to take a safety save. Ooh. Yeah, the main difference is that in invincibility hack, uh, invincible hack on, I'm still used to the old name of the category. <laughs> um, <laughs> we basically do not get a hit at any point. We just take, we can just go through everything. The only thing that doesn't uh, work is that the cannon doesn't kill us. It just uh, stops in its track. So we still need to make sure that the cannon hits the uh, enemy co-tile that is at the end of the of the big screen. Any uh, any Yars Revenge fans in the chat might notice a quite a similar style of gameplay for the Ooh. hacking in Yars Rising. <laughs> yeah. Uh, due to, no uh, to note, uh, there is a pro difficulty in this uh, game. Um, you are forced to do ex uh, you are forced to do every hack with danger mode on. So um, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so like this normal IH on or off is one stipulation. Oh, uh, I got Michael Jackson card. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm For some reason, this card, card if you yeah. do it weirdly, it um, basically slides at the same time. It's weird. Gets his attention <laughs> oh. in a funny way. And I can. Yeah. Uh, did I bring an umbrella today? Do I own an umbrella? We're going to be explaining the last part of that uh, giant category very soon. It's just that right now, mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a lot of stealth, uh, especially with one skip okay. that's going to be very tight. Mm -hmm. And so. Mm. <laughs> no, please stop jumping. We oh don't. Oh, God. <laughs> Emmy, please. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Emmy, please behave. <laughs> Okay, I'm Thinking good. That... I just need to do the Lunatin strats, mm -hmm. which was a strat that found by uh, by Lucifer. Yeah, I I worked very hard. Uh, accidentally got like the oh. very un well. I'm oh, not no. doing it. <laughs> oh no! Oh. I accidentally got the very uh, unlikely uh, circumstance of the guard I'm about to uh, alert here performing a specific attack and getting... Oh, darn oh, it. Oh, you got I it as well. Also, I also messed it up. Yeah, the gods are very dangerous, and while we would love to Come be uh, always on. doing it perfectly, it Ooh. just doesn't work Ooh. sometimes. Oh, you were close. Yes. That, looked very li that looked very late. Yeah, I was too afraid to retry. <laughs> mm. I am nothing if not a <laughs> risk taker in this game. <laughs> Love it. Uh, yeah. 
as I as I come too close to um, to our next uh, big augment, uh, we should explain Fife. Mm, yes, uh, Fife Ooh. is a major glitch that was found quite recently, in fact, by a community member by the name of Reju. And Fife is an acronym that stands for Full Invulnerability for Emmy. If you find a trick in our game, you get to make a funny name for it if you want. That works. <laughs> and uh, it's Fife. very Emmy-like in the sense that she would call it like that, and everyone would be like, "That's too long," and she says, "Don't care." <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And uh, Fife is your typical zombie glitch: get to zero HP without dying, mm -hmm. ignore damage for the rest of your life. Gotcha. Uh, now we have some audio cues that we need to be paying attention to, so I'm going to be quiet. Be in quiet, because this enemy attacks on a five count. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Oh, I was close. I thought he was going to attack me. <laughs> and that is our first mark of shame. Yeah. Little pop -up, You didn't just... get the one that I got, so mm. you're fine. <laughs> hey, Emmy. Um, so we're right now, as Ellie is finishing, so I'm not going to talk too much. Oh, you! Yeah. Um, she's doing nibble. Oh, she's doing nibble, which is a, a big aug uh, big augment in the run because it lets us uh, erase those energy barriers. Mm -hmm. Later. Oh. I hope she's going to get it. Yeah. Oh, it's you. difficult. It doesn't look like it. No. it it's difficult. Uh. Chat channel all of the energy. Time to I'm taking risks is what's going on here. I need to not take risks and I need to just do the hack. Come on. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. I believe. There we go. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> There yeah. it is. Oh, nice. Let's oh, go. Very well done. Nice. That is. If you were getting the second mark of shame, I would have laughed. Mm, yes, I should probably talk about the mark of shame. Uh, when you fail <laughs> yes, you a hack attention. for the first time, uh, the game tells you, "Hey, do you want to make it easier for yourself? You can turn on invincible hack. We have this for you, uh... and uh, we don't want that because this is in that category." I, I run IH on as well, so like I'm not opposed to turning it on. It's just mm -hmm. for this for this run, hack off. I hate IH. Yeah, off. We're, yeah, yeah, run becomes invalid and turns into IH on if you are mm -hmm. uh, activating IH on at any point. Um, right, skip. So yeah, I have a dialogue skip. I need to be ready on. There we go. Ooh, okay, got the card. <laughs> yeah. While I'm busy uh, going through the cards, I can also explain the fact that I took a save and Ellie, uh, Lucifer, is also going to take a, a save here uh, because we're going to do some death abuses. Yeah. The game saves everything outside of your location unless you're saving uh, at a specific uh, the save points, also known as sync stations, or if you get one of the augments. So when we did Zoldan Shot or Trionic Nibble, um, after those, we would get a, uh, our position saved. So by saving and then dying later to um, to a boss or to an, or to an enemy, we can actually skip a good amount of the backtracking in the game. It's only a couple of rooms, but it's still time saved, so we didn't go for it. Yeah. There's also a variant where instead of dying, you go to the uh, to the game's title. Yeah, put, put it's possible. Menu or it's, it's dying. Does the same. Yeah. Oh, it's I... useful in longer category, like in any percent, where we actually uh, sometimes do not get the chance of having a boss that just uh, deals damage to us. Yeah. Okay. I got the guard. Come on. Okay. Nice. Oh no. Oh no. Well, that's a five shot. <laughs> that's the five, five shot, shot. <laughs> unfortunately. You can do that one in four by getting four doubles and yeah. single. You get like a little 
little nice safety of, oh, you missed it once, it's okay. So here I'm already taking uh, damage because I am way too high. <laughs> Going into our first boss of the game, uh, of the game, Burning Sentinel. Um. Hello again. Okay. Come on, first firewall. I got a three second yeah, that's on good. firewall. Nice. Absolutely not going to complain. The IL time on that one <laughs> is two seconds. I'm oh, going to get this guy's attention yeah. because while well, they're calling it in, they... or I could just completely mess it up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no. Well, at least I don't need to get the hack. Yeah, you're good. You're good on that end. But yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, I'm doing Burning Sentinel and he's yeah. a big giant robot that serves as a tutorial boss in a way he's big he's bulky he takes uh he, he takes uh hits of the trionic nibble to uh, be uh, uh, yeah we, sh we should also mention this is the moment where there's like a lot of flashing lights because i have um, to wait for the lasers yeah. i'm on only six percent he flashes white every time i hit it and uh it explodes your retina mm-hmm Oh no, really? <laughs> he decided to do an attack before actually letting going oh. into the background. Come on, no. pull it in, pull it in, pull it in. I think he sees you. Out a guy. That's what I was supposed nice. to do. Just run past nice. him while he's uh, pulling that into his box. Now I have to get yeah. one. Oh, five shot. No, six shot. Oh, wow. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's, oh, it can seven. be very tight. <laughs> oh, no, you got... <laughs> oh, I got oh. a seven. And I'm also on a very mm. awkward... Uh, Light point. Count. I'm at nine. Yeah. Good luck. One. Ooh. Hit less. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm finishing. Uh, this is the only boss that has a uh, co tile, um, hacking like game. hacking mini game mm -hmm. at the end. So, and with this, that's good. And like, it should it should be said that this race is still anyone's game, even though we have an entire oh yeah boss between us. There are <laughs> plenty of opportunities uh, for screw ups up. or <laughs> accidental deaths. <laughs> like, it could go either way. We didn't put that estimate to 44 minutes for no reason. <laughs> for fun, it's very right? dangerous. <laughs> I totally get that. We're talking about like deaths that could cost two to three minutes. Mm. It's not fun. <laughs> well, this one saves us that uh, time. Oof. I had the shot. And yours wave. didn't. It's I'm so sorry. It's an, it's an awkward <laughs> attack to dodge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you at least put the? Um, oh, I did. The I did. I... Oh, you. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's okay. You, you need to take damage. I, I do. At some I do point. need. I do need to take damage. I just. I, I, I fell off it. Is why I'm complaining. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, oh, I'm not getting. Don't worry. I'm getting this. awful scrub butts. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting off this robot RNG here. All right, 65. That's a much oh. nicer starting <laughs> life total for this fight. Nice. I get uh, two or three hits. I got the wrong <laughs> Oh, didn't get the elevator. Whoopsie. Yeah, I had to redo it. <laughs> OK, so while I'm entering uh, Act 2, well, yeah, no, it's Act 2 at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, Ellie and Lucifer is going to be stuck uh, with Burning Sentinel for a little bit, and I got a uh, little clip. Elevator. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's a weird thing with the elevators where um, if you are in, if you get clipped by a wall, um, you actually basically go into the wall immediately. I'll uh, I'll take the uh, missile shot here. Yes. Yeah. Take the. Uh, 
actually she already knows still she could be less gentle. um but yeah if, if the wall is thin enough you can actually go through the wall and continue now we actually don't know how this uh, how much time this saves because this was found very recently mm -hmm. <laughs> and by that i mean two days ago oh jeez <laughs> we were doing practice and I thought, hey, the, that lift clip thing is a thing. Let's try it here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're talking about the fact that also the current world record that has been set two days ago. <laughs> yeah, we've been trying Fair. back and forth yeah. in practice. Oh, yep. <laughs> Come on. Useless. All right. There it is. Ow. Now we got Let's a little go. hacking minigame. I believe up. in you. You can get it. We go left. Oh, I'm getting two lasers. <laughs> oh, two laser. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Unfortunate. And then we go right. <laughs> we say unfortunate, but this is just an RNG check. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is no way of doing it fast without okay. uh, taking damage. Or that's burning if the game is nice, uh, just going into it without any issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you're case. asking, the voices are mandatory, and I will not allow um, people on the submitting to the leaderboard uh, without Emmy's voice ringing through the sky. Mod abuse. Get a mod abuse. No, <laughs> I'm a benevolent mod. <laughs> I'm so and benevolent. I was. I run this game before it even came out. I just uh, got that death abuse we set up for earlier. The unintentional deaths, uh, notwithstanding. And I am just about to enter Act Two as well. I am a little bit behind GP, but that's not too bad. I could mess up in the escape or uh, mm. have the thing that happened last time where oh, I literally I died to a hack. And oh, um, no. oh. I died to a hack, and also it it gave me the marker shimmer at the same time. So it was literally I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, it was a terrible time. Okay, I did get the scrub bot right in the corner there. There is a very oh, weird no. way to get past really? it. I got it like twice in practice, but it's very tight. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I got it once in a run, and even then, I it was too tight. I don't even know how I got it. There's another lift. Nice player. elevator clip. Now, do you two normally run Metroidvanias, or like, how did you come across this game? Because, truthfully, I like I had never heard of this until I had seen like your your submission to this, and it just looked so like oh. cool and unique. Jippy, I I will absolutely let Jippy take this one because she's the one who got me. <laughs> oh into <this> boy! Game. <laughs> All yeah. Right. So basically, I speed run a lot of things and um, a lot of weird things. To be fair, this game is probably the closest thing to a normal game to speed run I do. I, I I completely understand that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I mean, GP speedruns Mahjong video games sometimes. Yeah. Nice. I love it. I speed There's a few showrunners you should meet. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. Unfortunately, they're not at the best time zones, but I will make do. <laughs> yeah, little chat, I wasn't kidding when I said this is a very international race. Mm. Where are you two from? Just for I'm Australian, so <laughs> and I'm European. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> it was a early morning for GP. Meanwhile, it's <laughs> mid afternoon. I'm hungry, girl. Mid day, yeah. Yep. I'm so hungry. I didn't uh, breakfast. <laughs> you need to get breakfast no. after this, and then maybe some more sleep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, GP, you were describing how you started running yep. Yars Rising. Yeah, so basically, I opened Next Fest in middle of August, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, there was Next Fest on Steam, and I basically looked at the games, and I was like, well, mm -hmm. that sure looks like a game that looks fun. And also, I like WayForward games, so I'm going to 
I'm going to look at those. Nice. And, and then I played the game and I fell in love immediately because uh, the entire presentation and everything makes the game very charming. And I basically just decided, yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to run this game. And I'm um, run this then demo, I, she said. Yeah, I'm going to run this demo. I run the demo and basically got it down to almost perfect at this point. It's oh, ridiculous. Wow. The, the demo took place, uh, everything up to Burning Sentinel, so... Yeah, it, is, it also cuts the, the, the style sequence before Burning Sentinel. By the way, Centipede. Mm-hmm. Oh. And now Centipede is gone. Yeah, that's the typical I get. But yeah, and basically, I uh, I share what I sp what I speed run with people, and um, I started pestering Ellie because um, mm -hmm. we spend most of our days together. And uh, I was like, you should you should play this. You should speed run this game. First of all, you should play this game, obviously. <laughs> but you should speed run this game. <laughs> I, I I played Three Yards Rising, and I absolutely loved every minute of it. Uh, Yay. And yeah, I the bug got I got I got bit by the bug. The Yars bug. Well, now let's see if I can get it. Oh, you're gonna have a better star mind than I do. By the way, Eight I'm in the cutscene star basement, mine. so mm -hmm. I'm fine. Ooh, I'm ooh, doing yeah, nothing. You're, you're doing good. And uh, yeah. so yeah, GP uh, speed run <laughs> did speed runs of the next fest demo for Yars Rising. <laughs> Then the demo was a life of PAX West or East, I don't remember. West. West. So basically, I did more runs at that point, and mm -hmm. then I was like, well, now I'm set. I need to speedrun the full game. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And basically, all of that culminated in me submitting the first run to SRC and just, no. well, we're here now today. <laughs> Perfect. And this is yeah, all we should also shout out to in like the span yeah. of three months, right? Mm -hmm. Like game release on the tenth of September. Yeah. Yeah, tenth of September. This game has been out for uh, just over three months. Wow. No, I. Oh, that was not the right save. Okay, that's fine. Oh, um, yeah, it's after. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I got the I got the before save. That's okay. I just won't die. Mm -hmm. I will just do my best to not die. Yeah, don't worry. I'm just going to be entering uh, the uh, mm -hmm. difficult stealth with oh, yeah. a very... Oh, dear. Oh, uh, he was already going to do his thing. He was already going to switch. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, I'm not going to gamble. Okay. I'm just going to go with <laughs> the little thing, because at this point, he yeah, is you, not behaving the yeah, way I'm used to. Play it safe. Yeah. You... Nice. Okay. I'm at 6%. It's okay. It's I intended. Am, <laughs> I am going to do some absolutely wild stuff with the guards in that room when I get there. Ooh, I am. All right. Wild. All right. You should look at that. It's very cool. Oh, please. Mm -hmm. I'm just putting more tension on you. Mm hmm. It's all right. Get no pressure. It's, it's fine. fine. I'm. I'm uh, operate best <laughs> under a little bit of <laughs> pressure. <laughs> Meanwhile, I got out of the stealth section, the Ooh. very long uh, section, which means I am uh, basically on the last leg of the of no, the run. You're just about home free. Yeah. Speaking of leg, we're gonna get an upgrade that is named Grasshopper Legs. Oh, that is uh, Asuka, do you want to try jump. to guess what it... Oh, I was going to... I, gonna, I, I gonna already gonna... said wall jump earlier <laughs> as well. She could have not guessed that. <laughs> but yeah, I, we're going to get wall jumps. I tried to go for the one Love second it. centipede calorie there. That hack I just finished. I got the two second. Mm -hmm. Jump. Up. Up. Okay. And over. Yeah, we should mention also, um, this game also has an IL category, uh, like ILs of every hack mi hacking minigame. Uh, yeah. Um, it's I've, very uh... fun. It's also very, very tight and very difficult. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet. I'm, I'm sad we will not get to see my favorite hack in this speedrun, but 
if you go to the speedrun leaderboard for Yars Rising, go to the individual levels tab and find Stealth Walk. That is it's my favorite. Is my favorite IL. <laughs> What's well, normally ten seconds if you do it the intended strat? Uh, I do it in two. <laughs> It is. Oh. It is. Uh, it is quite a feat. I will. Uh, I will let you, let you folks find that one out for yourself. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes the hacking minigame. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give a little bit of a, of a teaser. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know the impossible game, that flash game. Sometimes. Yeah. It do. It the hacking minigames are just basically that. Jeez. Oh, yeah. All right. Now I got grass upper legs, and I'm heading towards the last boss, which is my favorite. Oh dear, I missed the shot. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Oh, I missed it a second time. Uh, now that one doesn't happen often. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> there we go. There you go. Let's oh go. dear. Oh yeah, we should also probably mention, now that I'm doing a whole bunch of button mashing at the moment, uh, the differences between you and I in methods of control for this game. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, you might see that I actually get some pretty fast mashing going on in this. Mm-hmm. Juppie does mashing. not. No, it's not, <laughs> it's not that. Juppie uses oh, a controller. Whereas I yeah. use keyboard, and the ah. fire button on keyboard does not appear to have a rate cap on it. So oh. keyboard technically is the better uh, way to speedrun the game. Quote, uh, yeah, quotes. <laughs> yeah. The devs tell you that you should be playing with a, you know, with a controller. Mm -hmm. I would say they're wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm very much a controller fan myself, so I can't really tell there. Well, you're lucky, uh, Lucifer, because I basically uh, destroyed the egg. Oh. <laughs> so I'm oh, getting bad cycles. Oh, no. You got, you got what I get. <laughs> yeah. So basically, so I technically have a um, very good Black Widow uh, strat. The problem is I broke the egg. Mm. This oh. is, the egg is, we nibble it and we get ammo for our missiles. And uh, that little web cocoon oh. around Black Widow at the top there uh, can only be broken by a missile. So we are stuck waiting for ammo. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I will be going with okay. a safer strategy for that oh. when oh I get up to it. I'm going to actually wait because I want to use the current missiles I have for... Mm -hmm. This phase. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, one more. Taking intentional damage there to use the mercy frames to get past all of these. And now I'm entering I think I have the room with yes. Nice. Well, very slow, Black Widow, for my standards, but it's and that was it the same strat for the ILs for Grasshopper Legs. So nice. I might be catching up. I need to mess up Escape Code Deck very bad. Yes, you, <laughs> GP would need to absolutely just go the wrong way and then. <laughs> Oh, I could do that. Do you, the, do you want to make the do you want to make the race better? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Go as fast as you as you can. Go for it. Uh, I had a very uh, very keyboard exclusive glitch happen to me. If you try to get a wall jump and you're holding both left and right at the same time, uh, you don't get a wall jump, which uh, oh. which can mess you up on some of the uh, big big wall jump that uh, are in runs of this game. Mm -hmm. But we love jumping. Emmy loves jumping. Oh, I got a... Yeah, you got a back jump, yeah, I... I got a back jump. Back jump, another glitch <laughs> that Reggie found. Basically, uh, 
turning around and wall jumping frame perfectly. You basically stay stuck to the wall that you jump off of and st still get the same wall jump vertical height. Now, uh, I am just about to enter Black Widow, oh. saving. Okay, I got acid shots. I'm kind of dodge that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By this point, I'm. you can basically hear it. Um, I'm in big escape sequence. <laughs> there is no timer because um, there is no need, but it's okay. Yeah. We're already racing okay. against our own timer, so mm -hmm. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Lucifer is entering Black mm -hmm. Widow. Getting into Black Widow, yeah. let's go. I'm going to start here with seven missiles. And then do the rest with shot. Oh, egg. Oh. oh, that one wasn't intended. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and with this, time is going to come very soon for me. Very nice Black Widow. That yeah. was a pretty good Black Widow, I'm, I will admit. Yeah, it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, and time happens when Emmy escapes, and that's time for me. GG's! Thank you! I am now only one escape sequence behind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got it! Yeah. Another little uh, safety save here, because I'm at half health. I want to be uh, nice and comfy at 100 for this next segment. You can do it. Yeah. Come on, uh, first try, first try. It's all good. Oh! Oh! <gasps> oh! That is so rude. You might notice that this enemy attacks on uh, two different patterns. It'll either count to three or it'll count to seven. I got the three count on that first attack, and it uh, oh. just nicked me in, on the on the corner. And now my escape. If you hear the keyboard going, <laughs> I, I really do apologize. I am. Um, oh, you're. Oh, we're, we're all used to that kind of fun sound. <laughs> uh, uh, it's all good. Please be, please be nice. I believe in you. Vomit, sure. Ooh. It's better than yeah, nothing. It's, yeah, it's no, no. It doesn't yeah. knock down. Like that's the best attack. If I did have to take an attack there, because it doesn't knock me down. All right. Yeah, I use the the baby bugs <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's simpler. that one's a knockdown though, so I'm not as endeared to it. Okay. Oh. Yeah, oh. I think you nope. should be good. Yeah. Oh. Oh my gosh. Come on, focus. focus. I know you can do it. Come on. Uh, I'm a little lost. Can you direct me to the bathroom? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> making me frightened. <laughs> Sweating? Who's sweating? I'm not sweating. <laughs> Keeping things spicy. Safety save. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there it is. I am a coward. I will admit it. <laughs> you are on 11. I would it's also like... take it. <laughs> 11. I am fully admitting to my cowardice. No, that's called intelligence right there. <laughs> yeah. I, I have admitted previously on the forums for Yars Rising's speedrun leaderboard <laughs> that I am a coward and that GP is not a coward. <laughs> <laughs> just because I want to do one of the hardest categories in the game. That doesn't even exist it's yet also... because it's still entirely theory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's still cooking. Be 
open again now. <laughs> Maybe I won't. Down the lift. Looking very hard. Come on to the door. And time. GG's. What well was done. my time? Uh, it is probably right around 39. 39? 39? I'll take 39. Yeah. 39 is okay. okay it's, we me. have. I can give you mm. the exact time, right? It is. Oh, it is 3858 oh. for you, Lucifer, and for Jupy, it is a 3544. Uh, yeah. I am. I'm very glad. <laughs> yeah. That was so cool. <laughs> 3544 oh. is like a very good time mm. in general, so yeah. you I, should aim for those. Yeah. Mm. I, I was aiming for sub 40 after the Burning Sentinel death, like sub 40, I would have been happy. Yeah. And, you, and, yeah, and you did that. I'm absolutely. Yeah. I'm overjoyed. GGs. Over the <laughs> GGs. <laughs> but yes, Chet, give some GGs for our wonderful pair of runners and. In the meantime, uh, for both of you, where where can they find you, and what are you currently playing, and any other shoutouts you might have? Oh, floor is all yours. Okay, um, I've been playing Yaz Rising. It's basically all I'm thinking about these days. <laughs> uh, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash lucifer9783. Uh, I will be speedrunning more Yaz Rising and plenty more... Uh, plenty more... Yaz speedruns to come. Uh, Jupy, how about you? Uh, hi, I'm technically on twitch.tv slash cutefangies. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube, but mostly I'm streaming on Twitch. When I feel like it, I stream basically whatever my fancy. I, <laughs> I do a lot of speedruns. Uh, I'm going to be uh, continuing uh, to do uh, Yaz Rising speedruns. I really want to do shotless um, and Ooh. other categories. Uh, there's going to be also uh, more games as I'm prepping for Power Up with Pride. So there's going to be more Masa Rebirth. There's going to be some Fate. It's going to be bright. Um, and I hope you're excited. Yeah, I will. I will see you at Fireside Pride because I've got to yes. run there as well. We will see. We will see each other. Yeah. Again, everybody. One more time, GG's to this wonderful duo and this absolutely amazing game and to all of our runners and games today. It's been so cool to see like how fast all, all of you have just mastered these runs. Like it is absolutely mind blowing. All of you need to be totally proud of yourselves. But with that, we're done. We're done with Express Lane for the day. But don't worry if you missed out, I got you boo. In a after a little bit of a break, we're going to go back and replay both Awfully Silly and Express Lane, so you don't miss out on anything. But tune in tomorrow, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, and you will see brand new episodes of Crosshair and Speedruns from the Crypt. So, from the Express...